Are you really happy with how things are going in your life? Are you living the way you truly want to, or do you feel like something needs to change? If these questions make you think, then you've found just the thing to help you out. You've come across a special guide that's all about helping you make your life better. We're not talking about quick fixes or small changes. We're diving into stoicism, an old but gold way of looking at life that's helped loads of people feel more fulfilled and strong no matter what comes their way. Stoicism teaches us to see what's really important, to know the difference between what we can change and what we can't, and to live with purpose and smarts. This guide is your chance to use these timeless ideas to build the life you've been dreaming of, a life full of meaning, clear-headedness and happiness. You're about to start a really cool journey. We'll show you how Stoicism can help you figure out what you really want, get past the tough stuff with a calm heart and make choices that are true to who you are. This journey is all about taking charge where you can and moving through life's ups and downs with ease and confidence. Get ready to be inspired, to face some challenges and to see things change for the better. A Stoic Guide to Create The life you want to live isn't just about making your life better. It's a new way to look at everything, guided by the smart and sturdy wisdom of Stoicism. You've found the right guide to help you unlock the life you really want. Let's kick things off together, tapping into the power of Stoicism to build a life that's truly happy and rich in what matters. Stoics said that there are some people in the world that we should not hang out with. They can do a lot of damage to your life and make you feel bad. Let's make a list of 15 types of people that Stoicism tells us to stay away from. Additionally, if you see that some people in your life are acting in these ways right now, get rid of them right away. First on the list is the Flatterer. The Flatterer is one type of bad person that Stoics tell us about. This person gives us lots of fake comments and praise, not because they like us, but because they want something from us. They are trying to get our favor by flattering us too much for a reason. The Stoics say that we should be careful of people who try to control us by giving us false praise. It's one thing for someone to praise you in a serious way, but if they keep doing it, they probably have a plan. The person who is flattering us might want to get a favor from us, gain power or influence by getting our approval, or just feel good about themselves by making us like them. No matter what the flatterer wants, their over-the-top praise is only a way for them to get what they want, and not a true picture of our qualities. The Stoics say that these tricks should not fool us. People who praise us too much should have a good reason for doing it, and we shouldn't trust their words too much or give them what they want. False praise doesn't help us. The smart thing to do is to look past the praise and figure out what the flatterer really wants. The second group is the greedy. Stoics say that people who are greedy are also bad people to watch out for. These are people whose only goals in life are to get money and material things. Their greed makes it hard for them to make good decisions and show good character. For greedy people, the most important thing in life is getting more money, stuff and social symbols. They always want more and never feel like they have enough, even though they have a lot of money. They are very greedy. In order to get more money and things, they will lie, cheat and step on other people. People who are greedy think that all things are equal and more for them means less for everyone else. They do not want to share because they have everything they want. They are very afraid because they are greedy. They will never be happy no matter how much money they have. The Stoics know that greed comes from thinking that things are limited. People who are greedy are never happy because they always feel like they need something. This makes them lose their dignity and peace of mind. The Stoics say that we shouldn't let greed take over our lives. Being happy with what you have and focused on things that really matter, like character, knowledge and peace, gives you a lot of freedom. People who are greedy put things like money and belongings ahead of virtue and peace of mind. Their judgment is clouded by their constant wants. 
The Stoics say that we shouldn't be greedy or envious of rich people. It's not better to have more. Happiness comes from inside, not from getting things from other people. The third group is the jealous. The Stoics say that people who are jealous are also bad people who we should avoid and not be like. These are people who don't like other people's skills, wins or things. They are always envious of what other people have. People who are jealous think that someone else's success is unfair to them. They think that there isn't enough for everyone and that life is a zero-sum game. They think it doesn't matter as much when someone else gets something. This makes the jealous person angry, insecure and resentful. Because they feel this way, they try to hurt the people they envy. The jealous person will try to downplay other people's skills, say that their success is just luck or advantage and spread bad stories about them. They try to bring down people they think are better than them. When someone is jealous, they become mean. Because they don't like it when other people succeed, they try to stop them instead of being inspired by their work. People who are jealous say mean things, give false praise, and privately enjoy it when the person they are jealous of has bad luck. The Stoics say that envy is a kind of moral weakness that comes from not being wise, but they stress that we can choose not to act out of envy. It's smart to feel good about other people and enjoy their achievements instead of being angry at them. Instead of giving in to envy, we should be motivated by other people's accomplishments to develop our own virtue. The fourth type is the angry. Stoics also warn about people who are always angry because they can be dangerous. People in this group often lose their temper, are angry and want to get even. Their anger gets the best of them and clouds their judgment. Small things, real or imagined, can easily make the angry person lose their cool. They quickly get angry and see everything other people do and say in the worst possible light. They hold grudges for a long time and won't forget or let go. Stoics thought that anger came from wanting something but not being able to get it and feeling useless. The person who is angry thinks that the world is not giving them what they deserve. This makes them angry and makes them want to hurt someone. Anger and violence become their way of taking control. An angry person can't think straight or do something useful when they are angry. There is no way to reason with them because of their anger. Because they are angry, they are likely to say and do mean things that will make things worse instead of better. The Stoics say that we shouldn't be like angry people. Even if we don't want to be angry, we can choose what to do with it. When we feel angry, it's smart to take a moment to think about what's going on. We only hurt our own lives when we get angry. It's better to act with self-control and common sense than with small complaints and anger. Anyone who can make you angry becomes your master, said Epictetus. The fifth person is the complainer. The Stoics say that another annoying personality trait we should avoid is being a constant complainer. People who complain are always negative and criticize and moan about their situations. They bring darkness instead of light. They are unhappy with almost everything, like the weather, the government, their job and their relationships. A lot of people see small flaws as big problems. The complainer always thinks that things are not good enough. The complainer doesn't do anything useful, they just whine. They act like victims when they could do something to make things better. And the complainer wants other people to feel sorry for them and often spreads their complaints widely to get attention. This makes them and those around them feel bad, which brings down everyone. People who complain don't understand that letting out their feelings only makes them more unhappy. It turns into a bad way of thinking. Epictetus said, if you want to get better, be happy to look clueless or stupid about unimportant things. The Stoics teach us not to be like people who complain. We may be having problems, but when we complain too much, we make things worse for ourselves. Focusing on making the most of the things we can control and doing positive things is much smarter than dwelling on the bad things. 
Although difficulties are unavoidable, we can choose to deal with them wisely and with resilience, or we can whine and complain endlessly. The sixth thing is the self-pitying. The self-pitying person is another annoying personality trait that Stoics warn us not to copy. These people spend all their time and energy being miserable and always acting like they are victims. The person who is self-pitying doesn't take responsibility for their situation. If something goes wrong, they put it on someone else, fate, the world, or something else. They feel like, poor, poor me, I deserve better than this unfair world. This makes them feel helpless and angry. Self-pitying people expect others to comfort them and make things better. They told sad stories to get people to feel sorry for them and reassure them that they were not at fault. The self-pitying person is stuck in this act of why though. In order to avoid responsibility and the need to make things better, they act like a victim. Their focus on the self makes it difficult for them to care about what other people may be going through. Stoic philosophers caution against developing a self-pitying attitude. They say to look at the ups and downs of life in a measured way. When faced with adversity, we should focus on what we can control and build resilience, not see ourselves as slaves and not wallow in our problems. It's up to us to decide whether to face problems with maturity or theatrics. Begin each day by telling yourself, today I shall meet with interference, ingratitude, insolence, disloyalty, ill will and selfishness, all due to the offender's ignorance of what is good and evil, said Marcus Aurelius. The seventh type is the cocky. Arrogance is another bad personality trait that Stoicism warns people to avoid. A overblown feeling of self-importance and power over others characterizes the arrogant. Their pride keeps them from seeing their flaws and where they really stand. The cocky person thinks they are always right, the best at what they do, and deserve extra attention. They are sure that their skills, knowledge, position, and rights make them better than others. This makes them talk badly about other people and think that feedback or help is not for them. Being cocky makes people intolerable, rude, and hostile toward those they see as less important. Because it would hurt their inflated sense of self-importance, the cocky person can't see their flaws or limits. There is no room for shame or self-reflection in their pride. The haughty can't be taught because they don't want to hear helpful criticism that would help them get better or show that you care. Also, it's hard for them to make real relationships because being treated as equal doesn't meet their needs for control and approval. The Stoics say that being proud is a bad thing to do. They say to be humble and understand that we all make mistakes. Being proud should come from having a good life not from thinking we're more important than we are. Marcus Aurelius said, you have no right to pass judgment on others at all. Their natures are the ones responsible. Their dispositions have become as they are under compulsion of character and necessity. Eighth, the selfish. The selfish person is another personality type that Stoics talk about as a problem. These people put their own needs ahead of all else and don't think about how their actions affect other people. The selfish person usually thinks about what's in it for me and bases their decisions on how they can help themselves. They go after their own goals without thinking about how those goals might affect other people. This makes the selfish person take advantage of others, not care about what other people need, break promises and avoid tasks that don't help them right away. They don't think it's wrong to get ahead at other people's cost. Their selfishness keeps them from seeing their social responsibilities. This gives you a bad name for not being trustworthy and reliable. The selfish person might get what they want in the short term, but in the long run, they lose respect and relationships. Their negativity and use of others lead to conflict and loneliness. They don't get the satisfaction that comes from helping and caring for each other. The Stoics warn that being selfish is a road that leads nowhere. 
People are social animals that should live together without fighting. Trying to make other people better is more meaningful than trying to make yourself better. As Marcus Aurelius put it, what brings a person tranquility is to do what's right and to be focused on the well-being of his fellow man. The ninth type is the stubborn. Stoic philosophy also talks about the stubborn person as a personality type that can cause problems. These people are very set in their ways and won't listen to reason or make deals. They are hard to deal with because they are not flexible. The stubborn person will not give up until they get what they want. They either can't or won't think about other points of view, suggestions or options. They won't change their minds even if there is clear evidence to the contrary. This makes people not want to change or grow. The stubborn person would rather keep doing stupid things than change their minds and admit they were wrong. To take a more considered approach, they would have to stop sticking to their beliefs and open their thoughts. People who are stubborn also can't meet the needs of others in relationships and work groups because they are so set in their ways. It turns into a power battle instead of an equal exchange. It's either their way or the highway. This makes people feel alone. Stoicism shows how foolish it is to be set in your ways. Although concepts are important, smart people know how to apply them in a way that makes sense and is done with care. When we don't change with the times or listen to what other people have to say, we hurt ourselves. Truth and growth should be our goals, not holding on tight to a weak ego. Tenth on the list is the rude, these people don't think about how their deeds and words affect other people. The ignorant person doesn't read social cues or see things from other people's points of view. They don't care about what might hurt, anger or annoy someone. They rush ahead with their plans without thinking about what might happen. This lack of awareness makes people hurt and angry. The person who isn't sensitive leaves behind hurt feelings, anger and people who feel like they aren't important. The uncaring, on the other hand, don't seem to notice or care about the harm they cause. They do not think about how to behave more carefully and with more grace. People don't like them because they are mean and don't care about others. Mean-spirited humor, harsh criticism and careless disrespect hurt trust and kindness. No one feels safe being open around the rude person, so their interactions stay thin. Stoicism encourages us to show more understanding, compassion and care in the way we act. We should try to act with kindness and care even though we can't change how other people treat us. Thoughtlessness leads to disagreements and loneliness, while thinking leads to community and understanding. Marcus Aurelius said, A person who does wrong often does not know that he is doing wrong. The eleventh type is the pessimistic. People who are cynical think that people who are sincere, idealistic or good are stupid or gullible. Their constant doubt kills hope and breaks down community. The cynic always thinks the worst of people, even when they are doing something good. They look down on traits like honesty, kindness and selflessness because they think no one really follows these rules. The cynic's first reaction is to laugh and not trust. They are critical because they have been let down and want to protect their ego. If the cynic doesn't believe in virtue, they don't have to feel foolish for believing in it or let down when it fails. But their doubts turn into a self-fulfilling narrative, driving people away and making what they doubt look bad. People don't like cynics because they say mean things and question everything. Their mean-spirited humor and failure to accept the best in people hurt relationships. At the heart of their protective anger is sadness over the good things they feel they were cheated out of. Stoicism says that even though bad things happen, we should still believe in our ability to be good and virtuous as a group. Being cynical hurts society and makes us less likely to work to make it better. Even though we're upset, we need to keep an open mind and work together to make the world a more fair and caring place. When you wake up in the morning, tell yourself, the people I deal with today will be meddling, ungrateful 
arrogant, dishonest, jealous, and surly, said Marcus Aurelius. Dealing with people is number 12. People who manipulate others do so for their own benefit. Because they lie, you can't trust them. Manipulators use encounters like chess games to figure out how to get ahead. They plan how to turn people against each other, change things to help themselves, gain power through fake partnerships, and force results to go their way. This cruel math makes the deceiver smart, but not trustworthy. They try to show that they are kind and honest, but behind that is their own selfish goal. The operator makes quick connections with people and then drops them when they are no longer helpful. Their goals always come before relationship. This kind of taking advantage of relationships will always fail. The trickster may get some short-term wins with sneaky plans, but their lying and breaking trust will catch up with them in the end. People stop being fooled by the trickster when they can see through their act. Stoics know that lying and taking advantage of others will fail in the end and punish the person who does it. The only moral and smart thing to do is to treat others with honesty and respect, seeing them as people who deserve respect and not as tools. Controlling someone can never lead to real teamwork. 113. The careless. Risk takers who are careless don't think about the results of their actions before they do them. Their lack of care puts them and others in danger. Risk takers and people who push the limits without thinking love being reckless. They get a rush from taking risky actions without thinking about the consequences and ignoring warning signs. They act like they don't have to follow the rules. This carelessness leads to bad things happening in the future. When someone is careless, they cause problems that could have been avoided with caution and self-control. Not only do their bad choices hurt them, but also everyone else who is touched by their lack of control. But the careless person doesn't learn, even when their carelessness hurts others. They find excuses for their mistakes, avoid taking responsibility, and keep giving in to their whims. They don't grow wiser by thinking about what they did wrong. Stoicism stresses that you should live logically and not carelessly. A certain amount of courage is good, but real bravery balances daring with logic to create virtue instead of danger. Being careless doesn't help anyone in the long run. We owe it to ourselves and others to be self-disciplined, deal with results, and learn from our mistakes. Nothing is more dishonorable than rashness, said Seneca. Number 14. People who don't have morals. People who have no morals or ethics are called principled. For what they want, they will do anything that isn't right. The person without morals doesn't feel bound by ideas of right and wrong. In order to get what they want, they are ready to lie, cheat, steal, betray, break vows, and hurt other people. In their minds, the end always justifies the means. This makes people feel like anything is okay. The person without morals doesn't have a consciousness or sense of right and wrong. They have no problem lying to people who trust them or taking advantage of their weaknesses to get what they want. People are just things that get in the way or are used. This dishonest method will always fail. Once someone's dishonesty comes to light, they are no longer trustworthy and are looked down upon. Because they do bad things, they leave a trail of disappointment and hurt lives. Any skills they learn don't help them in the end. As Stoics say, the only way to really succeed is to pursue virtue and good goals. Ambitions in this world come and go, but moral character stays the same. Before giving up our inner values, we have to be ready to lose everything else. In the end, people who don't have morals don't have anything valuable. A branch cut away from the branch next to it is cut away from the whole tree at the same time, said Marcus Aurelius. Number 15. The Mean. The last bad personality type that Stoicism talks about is the vicious person. It makes these mean people happy to be cruel, control others, and hurt them. Because they are so cruel, they are very dangerous. 
The mean person thinks that kindness is weakness and gets pleasure from hurting others. They are bullies who scare weak people to show their power or they torture their targets mentally and emotionally in a sneaky way. Their anger comes from a deep sense of sadness and fear. This kind of active destructiveness hurts the person's group and ties. They make people afraid and suspicious by being mean and taking advantage of weak people. They leave behind pain and hopelessness. Their hatred is a sickness of the soul that spreads to everyone they come in touch with. Stoicism stresses that because we are social beings, our fates are linked. When we hurt other people, we hurt ourselves in the end. We must strongly fight the urge to be unkind for no reason, because it hurts people's relationships and sense of worth. Being truly strong means helping other people feel better through understanding and care. When they are in charge, the mean people are a very serious danger. Stoicism tells us to give up and watch out for people who enjoy hurting others. There is no room for evil in a healthy society. Marcus Aurelius said, To hurt others is to hurt yourself. People who are mean may seem to win in the short term by being bad, but they lose their humanity in the process. When you arise in the morning, think of what a precious privilege it is to be alive. As you may know, Marcus Aurelius was a great Roman emperor and an eminent philosopher. He emphasized the importance of waking up early, incorporating this habit into a morning routine designed to enhance daily tasks. It's crucial to say that sleep is an energy-restoring experience, not a waste of time or a period of laziness. So, this period contributes significantly to your life's achievements. In this video, we'll explore 10 key Stoic principles on how you can cultivate habits that align with your long-term goals. Remember, great achievements are realized through incremental, small, yet persistent routine changes. Let's begin. The only thing I ask of you is not to skip this video in any way. If you're here, consider yourself different from the majority. Consider yourself an exception. Now, act like one and don't skip any part of the content. Find your Ikigai. 1. Find your Ikigai. Ikigai is a Japanese theory of well-being that can make your mornings more productive. This word means something like reason for being. If you find your life's purpose, you will certainly have more motivation to wake up focused and productive. Mornings lead to focused, productive and successful days, which inevitably create a successful existence. Just as unfocused, unproductive and mediocre mornings lead to unfocused, unproductive and mediocre days and ultimately a mediocre quality of life. Ikigai is defined as the reason why you wake up in the morning, which can be seen as your purpose in life. Marcus Aurelius believed that each of us has a purpose, something we were created for, and it is our duty to fulfill that purpose with effort and honor, because it is the purpose that makes you get out of bed in the morning to face another day. Your Ikigai can be anything, something you enjoy and haven't done in a long time, a new skill you want to develop, or anything that provides you with a meaningful reason to keep your motivation alive. The best way to find your Ikigai is by asking yourself, if I had more time, what things could I do? You can create 30 answers and select your favorites from those 30. Then you will be closer to discovering what motivates you. This is a task you need to complete before starting your day, as it will help you have healthy social connections, challenge yourself in a good way, relieve stress, stay fit, be creative, and avoid depression. You need to give yourself a solid reason to wake up, something to do every morning that motivates you the most. Prepare for your mornings. 2. Prepare for your mornings. In the words of Marcus Aurelius, all our efforts must be directed toward the end, or we will act in vain. If it's not right in the end, it will fail completely. Becoming a morning person requires more effort than just setting the alarm for 5 a.m. and hoping for the best. 
People who have decided to make the most of their mornings not only have a routine when they wake up, but also before going to sleep. While you have no control over your consciousness while you are sleeping, you definitely have control over your nighttime activities that will make you get out of bed. You can start by minimizing TV and phone time before bedtime. Make a commitment to yourself. Start tonight. Don't stay on your phone when lying down. Get your setting ready for tomorrow. For example, if you want to go to the gym, set aside your workout clothes before going to bed. Arranging your clothes the night before saves energy the next day. If you go to the gym in the morning, it will be hard to skip the workout when your clothes and sneakers are in your room, ready for you to wake up. This is a two-minute exercise that will save your energy in the morning. A person with unresolved problems, whether financial, relationship or work-related, cannot sleep well. Their minds don't rest. You've probably been through this before, laying your head on the pillow and reliving the situation countless times. It's better to spend the necessary time to resolve any problems you can before going to bed. If you have problems that you can't solve immediately or that are out of your control before going to bed, practice deep breathing. Calmly inhale and count to five and then exhale all the air while silently counting. By doing this simple exercise, your body understands that there is no danger and you can relax. Increasing oxygen intake into the body, your muscles become less tense, your heart rate slows down and you are invaded by an inner sense of peace. Your mind needs to slow down for you to have a good night's sleep and this will directly impact your morning. By making small sacrifices, you can be on the right path to becoming a morning person and squeezing the most out of your day to be more productive. Avoid distractions. 3. Avoid distractions. After waking up, Marcus Aurelius says, Focus on every minute, like a Roman, like a man, and on doing what's in front of you and freeing yourself from all other distractions. Some mornings when we wake up, we are pulled in several different directions without even realizing where we are going. You often get distracted by all kinds of things, like random videos on your WhatsApp feed, a new episode of your favorite series, tragic news channels, your Instagram, text messages, dirty dishes in the sink, unpaid internet and electricity bills. Even today, there are dozens of means of communication and mental stimuli. No matter how early you wake up, you will be distracted. And there are days when you are convinced that the world is conspiring to disrupt your focus and preventing you from accomplishing anything substantial. Most of the time, the things that distract us function as productive procrastination. These are useful things that need to be done, but not necessarily something we should focus on at that moment. We end up getting busy and neglecting our real goal. If you're waking up early, you wake up for a reason, which is to make the most of the extra time to do things you love before being drawn into the demands of your daily life. Wake up consistently. 4. Wake up consistently. According to Marcus Aurelius, you should build your life action by action and be content if each one achieves its goal as far as possible and no one can stop you. The degree to which you take responsibility for everything in your life is precisely the degree of personal power you need to change or create anything you want. If you truly want to wake up early every day, then you have to do it consistently to make it part of your routine. You need to develop your self-discipline. Self-discipline is nothing more than the habit of consistency. Finding the motivation to do something repeatedly until you do it automatically and start seeing results is what needs to be done. What's in your book, The Miracle Morning, tells us that we need to be consistent in the first 30 days to develop this new routine. We need to divide the 30-day deadline into three phases of 10 days each. Each of these phases presents a different set of emotional challenges and mental obstacles to maintaining the new habit. The first 10 days of implementing any new habit or getting rid of any old habit 
can seem almost unbearable, and it really is. The desire to quit will be persistent. If your new habit is to wake up early during the first 10 days, your experience might be something like this. Oh God, it's already morning. I don't want to get up. I'm too tired. I need more sleep. Where's the coffee? And then we hit the snooze button. The problem for most people is that they don't realize that these first seemingly unbearable 10 days are only temporary. After getting through the first 10 days, the hardest 10 days, you move on to the second phase of 10 days, which is considerably easier. Although days 11 to 20 are not unbearable, they are still uncomfortable and will require discipline and commitment on your part. But by this time, you will already be getting used to waking up early. You will have developed some confidence and made positive associations with the benefits of your habit. So, stay committed. Phase 3 is also where real transformation occurs. You go from having an identity that says, I'm not a morning person, to I am a morning person. Instead of dreading the alarm clock in the morning, now when the alarm goes off, you're excited to wake up and get going. Because you've been doing it for over 20 consecutive days, you're starting to see and feel the benefits. Realize that the whole process happens so that you incorporate being a morning person into your identity. And once you achieve that and identify with it, it becomes easier to act that way. Fine, take it easy. As we learn from the words of Marcus Aurelius, pay attention to the situation at hand and ask yourself, why is this so unbearable? Why can't I bear this? Are you ashamed to answer? The truth is that our brains prioritize instant gratification, valuing short-term rewards over long-term benefits. This is why 95% of people repeatedly fail to start exercise routines in the first 10 days. The problem for most people is that they don't realize that these first 10 seemingly unbearable days are only temporary. They think this is how the new habit is, and they tell themselves, if the new habit is so painful, forget it, it's not worth it. This is why when we can't wake up early one day, we often procrastinate. We tell ourselves that we'll start waking up early next Monday or next month. We need to understand that our ability to persist is what turns us into disciplined and strong individuals. Life is not linear, and we have so little control over our lives. We can only control what we do with our days. We can only control what we do with our days. We need to realize that each new day brings a new life and another opportunity to be better. So, forgive yourself for waking up late today and start waking up early from tomorrow. Everyone can fight for one day. Practice discipline in little things. 6. Practice discipline in little things. Marcus Aurelius says, we must discipline ourselves in small things and from there progress to things of greater value. If you have a headache, practice not cursing. Don't curse every time you have an earache. And I'm not saying you can't complain. Just don't complain with your whole being. The word discipline itself comes from the Latin word disciplina, meaning teaching or instruction. Practicing discipline in small things means constantly shaping ourselves. We are training our mental resistance to waking up early. You can practice this. First, place your alarm clock as far away from your bed as possible. This forces you to get up and get your body moving, and movement generates energy. So, when you get up and leave your bed, it naturally helps you wake up, because if your alarm clock is right next to your bed, you'll either turn it off or, worse, hit the snooze button. Never hit the snooze button. If you think about it, pressing the snooze button in the morning doesn't make sense. It's like saying, I hate waking up in the morning, so I'll do it again and again. If it's far from your bed, you'll have to get out of bed to turn it off. By then, you're standing. Now you just need to stay awake. It becomes easier to leave the room as soon as you turn off the alarm. Don't allow yourself to rationalize going back to bed. If you let your brain convince you not to wake up early, you never will. Don't go back to bed. There's only one option. Force yourself to leave the room. 
Second, make your bed. By making your bed in the morning, you complete the first task of the day. It gives you a small sense of pride and motivation to complete another task. And from this small task, you'll complete many other larger tasks throughout your day. Making your bed also reinforces the idea that small things matter. And if you can't do the small things right, you'll never be able to do the big things. Find an accountability partner. 7. Find an accountability partner. When you realize that your purpose is to wake up early, having a good accountability partner is essential. As we pursue our goals, there is one skill that will remain above all others, the ability to hold ourselves accountable. An accountability partner is a person who coaches someone else in terms of helping them keep commitments. Your accountability partner can be one of your friends, family members, colleagues who have already achieved the goal you're working towards. In this case, your accountability partner will help you stay consistent with your morning commitments and your progress towards them. You should select someone who is as committed as you are, who shares similar values, who can be available when you are, and who is genuinely interested in helping you succeed with your morning routine. An accountability relationship is always good because knowing that we'll talk to someone who is emotionally and energetically invested in our success keeps us on track even when things get tough. Remember death. 8. Remember death. Marcus Aurelius tells us, since it is possible that you might depart from life this very moment, regulate every act and thought accordingly. The Stoics made it a routine to keep the perspective of death in mind. You can also practice this every morning. There's a phrase in Stoic philosophy called memento mori, which means remember that you will die. The only perennial truth, whether rich or poor, successful or not, religious, philosophical, it doesn't matter, you will die. The point of this reminder is not to be morbid or promote fear, but to inspire, motivate and clarify. This morning routine will help you keep perspective on the things that truly matter, which are your internal principles, your home, your money, your fame. It's temporary and can be taken away from you at any moment. The only thing that can never be taken away from you is your character. It's only our character that defines us and guides us through life. A person can rise or fall solely due to the virtues or flaws of their character, and often that's what leaves a legacy. So, the idea of remembering your death will anchor you. Just like Steve Jobs, every morning look at yourself in the mirror and ask if today were the last day of my life, would I want to do what I'm about to do today? And if you go too many days without saying yes to this question, then you know you need to change something very quickly. When you wake up in the morning, think about how lucky you are to be living. Marcus Aurelius was a great Roman emperor and a famous thinker, as you may know. He said that getting up early was very important and that this habit should be part of a morning routine that would help with daily chores. It is important to stress that sleep is not a waste of time or a time to be lazy, but a time to recharge. So, this time period makes a big difference in your life's accomplishments. Now I'm going to talk about 10 important Stoic ideas that will help you form habits, that will help you reach your long-term goals. Remember that big goals are reached by making small, consistent changes to your daily practice. Let's start. Please do not skip this movie in any way. If you're here, think of yourself as different from most people. Think of yourself as an exception. Look for your Ikigai. You need to find your Ikigai. Ikigai is a Japanese way of thinking about happiness that can help you get more done in the morning. This word means something like reason for being. If you find your life's meaning, you will be more motivated to get up and get things done. Focused, busy and successful days start in the morning and that leads to a successful life. Like how unfocused, unproductive and average mornings lead to unfocused, unproductive and average days, 
which in turn lead to an average quality of life. If you think about it, your ikigai is what makes you wake up in the morning. It's like your meaning in life. Marcus Aurelius thought that everyone was born with a purpose and that it was their job to work hard and do their best to achieve that reason. Because the reason you get up in the morning is what drives you to face another day. It can be anything, something you enjoy doing that you haven't done in a long time, a new skill you want to learn, or anything else that gives you a reason to stay motivated. Asking yourself, if I had more time, what things could I do, is the best way to find your ikigai. You can come up with 30 answers and then pick the best ones. Then you'll be closer to figuring out what drives you. Doing this before you start your day will help you make good friends, push yourself in a healthy way, deal with stress, stay fit, be creative and skip sadness. You need to give yourself a strong reason to get up every morning. Pick something that will really drive you. Get ready for the morning. 2. Get ready for the morning. Marcus Aurelius said, All our efforts must be directed toward the end, or we will act in vain. If it's not right in the end, it will fail completely. Setting an alarm for 5 a.m. isn't enough to become a morning person. Putting faith in the best. People who want to make the most of their mornings have a set pattern both when they wake up and before they go to sleep. Even though you can't change your mind while you sleep, you can definitely change the things you do at night that will make you get out of bed. You can start by cutting down on phone and TV time before bed. Make a promise to yourself and begin tonight. Don't talk on the phone while you're sitting down. Get ready for tomorrow by setting up. Say you want to go to the gym, put your workout clothes away before you go to bed. Putting your clothes away the night before saves time in the morning. To avoid going to the gym in the morning, make sure your clothes and sneakers are in your room, ready for you when you wake up. This two-minute workout will help you feel better in the morning. People who have unsolved issues at work, in relationships, with money, or with other people, can't sleep well because their thoughts don't rest. You've probably been through this before. Lay your head down and think about it over and over again. Spend as much time as you need to solve any issues you can before going to sleep. Before you go to sleep, do some deep breathing if you have problems that you can't fix right away or that you can't change. Take a calm breath in and count to five. Then let all of your breath out while you continue to count in your mind. Your body will know there is no danger when you do this simple exercise so you can rest. When you increase the amount of air you take in, your muscles relax, your heart rate slows, and you feel at peace with yourself. To get a good night's sleep, your mind needs to calm down. This will have a direct effect on your morning. You can become a morning person and get more done during the day by giving up some small things. Try to stay focused. Third, stay focused and avoid distractions. When Marcus Aurelius wakes up, he tells himself, focus on every minute, like a Roman, like a man, and on doing what's in front of you and freeing yourself from all other distractions. When we wake up in the morning, we are pulled in a lot of different directions and we don't always know where we are going. You frequently get sidetracked by all kinds of things, including odd videos on WhatsApp, a new episode of your favorite show, sad news channels, Instagram, text messages, dirty dishes in the sink, and unpaid phone and internet bills. There are still a lot of ways to communicate and things to think about. No matter how early you get up, something will take your attention away. On some days, you really believe that everyone and everything is out to get you to lose focus and not get anything important done. Most of the time, the things that confuse us are actually ways to put things off. These are good things that need to be done, but they might not be what we should be focusing on at that time. We get too busy and forget about our main goal. You wake up early for a reason, to do things you love with the extra time before getting caught up in the things that need to be done for work. Wake up every day. 4. Always get up in the morning. 
Marcus Aurelius said, you should build your life action by action and be content if each one achieves its goal as far as it can and no one can stop you. The level of personal power you need to change or create anything you want depends on how much you own your life. If you really want to get up early every day, you have to do it over and over again without fail. Self-discipline is something you must work on. Self-discipline is just the habit of being consistent. You need to find the drive to do something over and over again until it becomes second nature and you start to see results. According to your book, The Miracle Morning, we need to stick to this new pattern for 30 days in a row. The 30-day deadline needs to be split into three parts of 10 days each. Each of these stages comes with its own set of mental and emotional difficulties that make it harder to stick to the new habit. When you start a new habit or get rid of an old one, the first 10 days can be very hard, and they really are. The will to quit will last for a long time. During the first 10 days of making getting up early a habit, you might think things like, oh my God, it's already morning. I don't want to get up. I'm too tired. I need more sleep. Where's the coffee? And then hit the snooze button. The trouble is that most people don't know that these first 10 days, which may seem awful, are only temporary. Once you get through the first 10 days, which are the hardest, you move on to the second 10 days, which are much easier. It's not terrible from days 11 to 20, but they are still uncomfortable and will require you to be disciplined and committed. At this point though, you should be used to getting up early. You'll have gained some confidence and linked the good things that happen when you do your habit with good feelings. Keep your promise. The real change happens in phase three as well. You switch from thinking, I'm not a morning person, to thinking, I am a morning person. Now when the alarm goes off in the morning, you're excited to get up and start your day. You're starting to see and feel the effects now that you've been doing it for more than 20 days in a row. You should understand that the whole process is meant to help you become a morning person. And once you get there and connect with it, it's easier to act in that way. Okay, chill out. As Marcus Aurelius said, look at what's happening and ask yourself, why is this so unbearable? Why can't I bear this? Are you embarrassed to answer? The truth is that our brains value short-term gains over long-term benefits because they give us quick satisfaction. This is the main reason why 95% of people fail to start an exercise plan in the first 10 days. The trouble is that most people don't know that these first 10 days, which may seem awful, are only temporary. They tell themselves, if the new habit is so painful, forget it, it's not worth it. This is why we often put things off when we can't get up early. Next Monday or next month, we tell ourselves, we'll start getting up early. The thing that makes us strong and focused is our ability to keep going even when things get hard. We don't have much power over our lives and they don't go in a straight line. The only thing we can change is what we do each day. The only thing we can change is what we do each day. We need to understand that every day is a fresh start and a chance to do better. Okay, so let yourself off the hook for getting up late today. From tomorrow on, get up early. One day is enough to fight. Be disciplined in little things. Sixth, be disciplined in the little things. Marcus Aurelius said, we must discipline ourselves in small things and then move on to things of greater value. If your ears hurt, don't swear all the time. Don't get me wrong, you can still complain. Do not hold a grudge against anyone. The word discipline itself comes from the Latin word disciplina, which means to teach or lead. Being disciplined in small things means that we are always changing. We are training our minds to not want to get up early. You can work on this. First, Move your alarm clock as far away from your bed as you can. You have to get up and move around because of this, and moving gives you energy. That's why getting out of bed helps you wake up, because you'll either forget to set your alarm, or even worse, hit the snooze button if it's right next to your bed. 
do not press the sleep button. It doesn't make sense to hit the snooze button in the morning in this case. Saying that means you'll keep getting up in the morning even though you hate it. If it's far from your bed, you'll have to get up to turn it off. At that point, you are standing. Just stay awake now. As soon as the alarm goes off, it's easier to leave the room. You shouldn't let yourself think about why you should go back to bed. You will never get up early if you let your mind tell you not to. Do not go back to bed. You can only leave the room if you force yourself to. Second, clean up your room. Making your bed in the morning is the first thing you need to do. It makes you feel a little proud and drives you to finish another job. You'll go on to do many other bigger jobs during the day after this small one. It also helps to remember that little things do matter by making your bed. You'll never be able to do the big things if you can't do the little things right. Find someone to hold you accountable. 7. Get a partner who will hold you accountable. If you want to stick to your goal of getting up early, you need a good accountability partner. One skill that will always be more important than any other is the ability to hold ourselves responsible. When someone helps someone else keep their promises, that person is called an accountability partner. Someone you can count on as an accountability partner could be a friend, family member, or co-worker who has already reached your goal. In this case, your accountability partner will help you keep your morning promises and track your progress toward them. You should choose someone who is just as dedicated as you are, who shares your values, who is flexible, and who really wants to help you succeed with your morning routine. A bond of responsibility is always helpful because it keeps us on track, even when things get tough, because we know we can talk to someone who cares about our success. Think about death. Eighth, think about death. Marcus Aurelius said, since you might die right now, control every action and thought accordingly. The Stoics always thought about death. This is something you can do every morning. Stoic philosophy has a word called memento mori, which means remember that you will die. This is the only truth that never changes. You will die whether you are rich or poor, successful or not, religious or philosophical. This is not a sad or scary warning. It's meant to excite, encourage, and make things clear. Having this process in the morning will help you keep your internal beliefs in mind, which are the things that really count. No matter how much money, fame, or a home you have, it can all be taken away at any time. Being yourself is the only thing that can never be taken away. Character is the only thing that makes us who we are and guides us through life. Character flaws or accomplishments are the only thing that can make or break a person, and that's often what stands out. So the thought of remembering your death will hold you down. Look at yourself in the mirror every morning and ask, if today were my last day, would I want to do what I'm about to do? This is what Steve Jobs did. And if you don't answer this question for too many days, you know you need to make a change right away. Do not miss the chance to truly live your life. When you're stuck in something you hate, the thing you should fear most is not death, but never having started to live. We are told by Marcus Aurelius, 9. Practice negative visualization every morning. Say to yourself in the morning, the people I deal with today will be narcissistic, ungrateful, cocky, dishonest, jealous, and rude. They are like this because they can't tell good from evil. Stoics don't imagine a perfect society. They see things as they are. When you use negative vision, you need to be much more honest with yourself and keep your goals in check. What might go wrong? How would you handle something like this? Can you get past them or make plans for them? You are better prepared to handle disasters if they happen, if you plan for the worst. For instance, you're going to work and your boss is being mean to you. But because you thought about this in the morning, you're always ready for your boss to refuse to work with you. You'll be pleased when he treats you well out of the blue. But even if he doesn't, you'll always be ready and able to keep quiet. 
Think about this. You want to close a big deal and have a big meeting with a big client. You thought ahead of time in the morning that you might stutter or get very nervous, or that the client might have a lot of questions because your presentation isn't clear. You were mentally ready for the anxiety though because you knew it was going to happen. You stay calm, in control of your feelings, and give a good presentation. Visualizing bad things happening makes you less scared of them. It calms you down when they happen and gets your mind ready to handle a problem if it happens. Take pleasure in your life. In our final quote from this Marcus Aurelius video, he says, To the gods, I am indebted for having good grandparents, good parents, a good sister, good teachers, good associates, good relatives, and friends. Almost everything is good. Marcus Aurelius is very sincere and humble about how he learned to develop his values and ethics, and expresses a great deal of gratitude to those who assisted him in becoming his self. We can do the same thing by writing in a thanks notebook. Writing in a thanksgiving notebook is easy to do. Being thankful doesn't just have to be for big things in life. If you want to be happy, you need to start by noticing all the good things in your life. No matter how small, there is something to be thankful for. Pick three to five things you're thankful for each day and write them down in a journal or notebook. If you've had a bad day at work, think about getting home to your family or pet, or just be thankful that you're still alive. Being grateful for your life before bed not only helps you sleep well, but it also gives you a reason to be ready for the difficulties of the next day when you wake up. Always keep in mind that the last thing you thought before bed was probably the first thing you thought in the morning. We've all had nights when we couldn't sleep because we were so excited about a trip, a new job, or a holiday. You jumped out of bed very excited when the alarm went off. Same thing if you think before bed, wow, I'm so tired, I can't believe I have to get up early tomorrow. When you wake up, your first thought will be, it's time to get up. I just want to keep sleeping. So decide to have a good expectation every night for the next morning. Say thank you, forgive yourself for the mistakes you made, and promise to do better the next day. We change, not things. You have to know that outside things can't bother you if you want to be a calm. It's only your thoughts on these things that can. People who believe in Stoicism think that events are relative, they just are what they are. What can make us angry or strong, though, is how we see these events through our own individual lens. The Stoics were very interested in how to use their minds to get ahead. They looked at life's raw materials, the things they couldn't change, and only thought about how these things could help them. If you have this kind of mind, every turn of fate gives you power and chance. Lesson 1. Getting better at how you see things to deal with modern distractions. The constant noise of social media, the constant flow of information, and the constant draw of entertainment have made our world a noisy place. Marcus Aurelius's Stoic philosophy offers a place of peace and clarity. According to Aurelius, the most important thing about Stoicism is realizing that we are in charge of our own minds, not the outside events that try to upset our inner peace. You are in charge of your mind, not the outside world. If you understand this, you will be strong. Aurelius says this lesson, which is at the heart of Stoicism, shows us how to find peace in a world full of distractions. By taking this view, we give ourselves the power to sort through the flood of information and stimuli with clarity, focused only on what really needs our attention and energy. Starting the Stoic path means carefully looking at how we see things, pushing us to tell the difference between how things really are and how we think about them. There are so many media, social networking and entertainment choices out there that it's easy to get stuck in a loop of constant response and lose sight of our power. But when we use Aurelius's advice, we learn to stop, think, and ask ourselves, is this something I can control? Does it fit with my needs and goals? By making us think about our actions, 
This practice of reflection helps us focus on things that are important and helpful instead of getting distracted by digital noise and social pressures. It's a call to live on purpose so that every choice you make isn't based on habit or force, but on clear conscious thought. To accept this stern lesson, we need to do more than just learn it. We need to apply it consistently in our daily lives. We are constantly bombarded by messages, news cycles, and the newest trends. Going back to our silent center is very important when outside distractions make us lose our calm. Aurelius tells us that we need to quickly get back to our stoic ideals. This doesn't mean shutting ourselves off from the world or giving up all technology, but it does mean being very careful with our time and attention. We strengthen our resilience against the stresses of modern life by doing this practice over and over again, and we also create a life with meaning, peace and depth. By doing this, we don't just passively take in our society. Instead, we live like Stoics who, in the middle of chaos, find strength, focus and peace in their own minds. Lesson 2. How to live simply and how to focus powerfully. The Stoic philosophy suggests seeking simplicity as a way to calm down in today's busy world where technology and shopping promise happiness but often only give us distractions. Marcus Aurelius, who was wise in the art of life, says that having too many things can be distracting. Even though this concept is very old, it makes a deep connection with the soul of today's busy world. There is more to the idea of simplicity than just getting rid of unnecessary things. It also involves making our mental and emotional lives easier. By picking an easier way of life, we ignore the outward aimer that is trying to get our attention and instead live a focused, meaningful life. Learning to be still and quiet inside in a time when too much information and digital clutter are normal is like defying the system. This quiet isn't about not hearing anything, it's about achieving a state of mind and feeling that isn't affected by the chaos in the world. Stoicism tells us to build a fortress of peace inside ourselves that no outside force can break. To do this, we need to regularly disconnect from things like social media, the news and emails that are constantly vying for our attention and focus on ourselves by meditating and practicing awareness. These techniques help us be aware of our feelings and thoughts without getting attached to them. This makes it easier to tell which outside factors need our attention and which ones don't. By putting our inner peace first, we create a safe haven within ourselves, a peaceful spot we can always go back to, no matter how loud the outside world is. Focusing is an important skill for Stoics to have in order to deal with the noise of everyday life. Stoicism tells us to focus on the job at hand as if it were the last thing we were doing in our lives, even though our culture values being busy all the time and doing many things at once. This strong focus isn't about being strict. It's about giving our current tasks and responsibilities the full attention and care they need. As Aurelius says, it's about doing one thing at a time with accuracy and sincerity, kindness, willingness and fairness. Our work quality and sense of self-worth are both improved by this strategy. By focusing on a few things at a time, we block out distractions that take our attention away from our work. By doing this, we not only get more done, but we also feel more satisfied with the things we do every day. Focusing isn't just a way to get things done, it's also a way of thinking that says every moment is important and we have the power to choose how to spend our limited time. We can handle the modern world with grace and calmness if we follow the stoic principles of simplicity and focus. Focusing and finding inner peace help us tune out the noise around us and choose a life with meaning, purpose and peace. Lesson 3. Using Stoic Strength to Stay Strong in the Modern World In this modern age, where distractions are not only common but also a big part of our daily lives, 
Stoicism offers a long-lasting answer, resilience. This old philosophy, which stresses inner power and living a good life, can help you get through the complicated things that life throws at you without giving up. The Stoics recognize that obstacles in life, such as the allure of distractions, present chances for development and self-improvement. By keeping a calm attitude, we can approach the digital world with purpose, seeing technology as a way to make things better instead of something that will keep us busy. This lesson goes into detail about how we can use stoic ideas to build resilience against the noise of modern distractions. It focuses on the practice of thought and self-control, learning to control yourself. Self-control in the modern world means being able to say no to digital messages, social media scrolls, and the steady stream of information that wants to take your attention away. Stoic self-control isn't about saying no to joy. It's about noticing and putting long-term happiness and satisfaction ahead of short-term urges. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength, says Marcus Aurelius. By following this concept, we learn to stop and think about how we react to possible distractions. We ask ourselves if interacting with them is good for us and fits with our values. This break is very important because it gives us time to think about what we want to do instead of just responding. We can learn self-control by limiting how much we use technology, setting times to check our emails or social media, and going on digital detoxes. These habits give us back control over our time and attention, which lets us live in the present more fully and pay attention to what's important. The act of thinking about things. One important part of Stoic practice is reflection, which means looking at our thoughts, actions and the reasons behind them on a regular basis. Modern distractions are hard to avoid, but thought can help us understand how easily we can be swayed by digital noise and strengthen our resolve to live a calm life. We can find patterns of behavior that pull us away from our core values and toward distractions by thinking about the things we do every day. Through self-examination, we can change our paths and make more conscious choices about how we use technology and spend our time. Any activity that encourages insight and clarity, such as writing, meditation, or just spending time in nature, can help support reflection. Our resilience against the things that try to take our attention away is strengthened by regular thought, which helps us learn more about who we are and where we fit in the world. Adopting stoic resilience in the digital age is more than just ignoring distractions. It means building our lives around self-control and thought. Not only do these habits make outside noise less powerful, but they also make us more capable of happiness, virtue and peace. By doing this, we respect the stoic promise to live an important and sacred life no matter what time we live in. Lesson 4. Developing a Stoic Mindfulness in the Middle of Digital Chaos In the digital world we live in now, where distractions not only try to get our attention, but often easily take it, the calm practice of mindfulness stands out as a source of focus and direction. Stoic mindfulness means being deeply aware of the present moment and being able to tell the difference between what is important and what is not. This old psychological view is a strong contrast to the way we usually deal with technology, where our attention is split up and our involvement is almost non-existent. By practicing stoic awareness, we give ourselves the tools to handle the constant flow of emotions and information with calm and purpose. In this lesson, we'll look at how stoic mindfulness can help you keep your mind calm and focused in the middle of all the digital chaos. How to be aware of the present moment. Stoic attention starts with becoming more aware of the present moment. Focusing on the present moment 
and noticing our thoughts, feelings and sensations without judging or attaching to them is part of this exercise. In a world full of distractions, this kind of awareness helps us tell the difference between what really needs our attention and what we can put down. Marcus Aurelius said, Concentrate every minute like a Roman, like a man, on doing what's in front of you with precise and genuine seriousness. If we take this focused approach to our daily contacts and tasks, we not only get more done, but also feel better about the work we're doing. Being aware of the present moment takes work and practice, especially when you're surrounded by digital alerts and scrolling mindlessly. But if we do mindfulness-promoting activities like meditation, deep breathing, or even mindful walks on a daily basis, we improve our ability to stay focused and not get sidetracked in this digital world. Selective involvement and careful judgment. The habit of making clear decisions and choosing what to do is another important part of stoic awareness. To do this, we have to choose where to put our attention and energy based on the virtue and knowledge principles of Stoicism. In a world where every website and app wants our attention, being able to say no to things that aren't important is very useful. Stoics tell us that we shouldn't respond or even notice every event, thought or trend. We learn to handle the digital world with a clear sense of purpose by using good judgment we only interact with material that makes our lives better and fits with our ideals. This careful involvement keeps us from being overwhelmed by digital junk and makes sure that the things we do with technology are important and enjoyable. When we use technology, we value quality over number and depth over range. Practicing stoic awareness in the middle of digital chaos is not a dumb way to avoid technology. It is a smart, conscious way to live in the modern world. By practicing being aware of the present moment and making good decisions, we can take our attention back from things that are distracting us and put it on what really counts. By doing this, we live up to the stoic ideal of a life full of meaning, peace and resilience, even in the crazy world of technology. Setting stoic limits for a balanced digital life is lesson five. In a time when technology can be both helpful and harmful, setting firm limits is important for staying balanced and protecting our mental health. With their focus on virtue, self-control and reason, the stoics teach us a lot about how to set limits that keep digital distractions from taking over our time, attention, and mental health. By setting strong limits on ourselves, we can use technology in a way that helps us without getting caught up in its addictive habits. This lesson looks at how to use stoic advice to make our digital lives more healthy. It focuses on the steps we can take to cut down on distractions and spend more time in the real world putting real-world encounters first. One of the most important Stoic rules is to value contacts in the real world over those that happen online. The Stoics knew that direct human interaction was important for building relationships and growing as a person. The digital world, on the other hand, often provides a weaker form of connection with only surface-level exchanges and a fake sense of community. To set this limit, we must choose to spend time and energy on activities that bring us together, activities that we do alone, and talks with others that help us grow as people. Setting times during the day when digital devices are to be put away, spending more time with family and friends in person, or doing sports and activities that don't involve computers are all ways to do this. By doing this, we not only improve our daily lives, but also increase our resilience to the isolated effects of too much digital use. Keeping internet use under control. The stoic concept of balance is a key way to keep your digital use in check. Marcus Aurelius told us that we should live the easiest life possible because having too many things can be distracting. We need to be careful about the digital content we watch, the apps we use, 
and the amount of time we spend online because of this. Setting strict boundaries in this case means limiting our digital time, such as by using apps that track our screen time, making tech-free zones in our homes, or committing to regular digital detoxes. These habits help us reach a level of digital simplicity in which our use of technology is deliberate and useful rather than mindless or compulsive. This is about making a place where technology is used to help our health instead of being a constant source of stress. Setting firm limits for a healthy digital life is an ongoing process that needs constant attention and changes as our lives and technology change. But by putting real-life relationships first and limiting how much we use technology by following stoic principles, we can get through the complicated modern world more easily and happily. We can improve our personal and social well-being by taking this method. It also fits with the stoic desire of a good, worthwhile life that is lived in harmony with nature and reason, even in this digitally heavy age. Sixth lesson, keeping your cool in a digital storm. In the drive to tune out the noise of modern distractions, accepting digital privacy stands out as a practice that can change things. From a stoic point of view, solitude is not about being alone or lonely, but about finding strength and clarity within oneself. We intentionally turn off the digital noise to get in touch with our ideas, beliefs, and the core of who we are. There is peace and quiet in this area where there are no alerts or endless scrolling to distract us. This is where we can think, dream and make plans with purpose. Digital privacy means setting aside time to disconnect from technology so that we can do things that are good for our minds like reading, writing, meditation or just being outside. There is nothing empty or useless about these times of being alone. Instead, they are where our greatest ideas and thoughts grow. Fortifying ourselves against the constant requests of the digital world, we take back our attention and find inner peace by enjoying digital privacy on a regular basis. Developing stoic distance is a key way to lessen the effects of modern distractions on our lives. This doesn't mean being cold or uninterested in the world. It means keeping a healthy distance from the things that try to get our attention and realizing that they don't make us who we are or make us happy. To be mentally detached from digital media and technology or to let them control our mood and sense of self-worth as the Stoics instructed, it means being aware of the urges to check our phonies or browsy social media and deciding not to give in to them. The idea behind this practice comes from the Stoic philosophy that we only have control over our own responses and not over outside events or other people's actions. By becoming more detached in this way, we can focus on what really matters, our deeds, our morals, and what we bring to the world around us. Stoic detachment helps us learn how to use technology to our advantage instead of letting it use us. This makes our digital lives more peaceful and satisfying. There are strong ways to live in the digital age with knowledge and calmness by accepting digital silence and building stoic distance. These habits help us avoid becoming too dependent on technology. Think about what's most important to us and interact with the digital world in a way that suits us. In this way, we not only protect our mental and emotional health, but we also live more in line with stoic ideas, finding joy and meaning in a world that often seems meant to confuse and distract us. Lesson 7. Building Stoic Strength to Handle Digital Overwhelm To build strong resilience against digital overload, we must first be clear about what we want to achieve when we use technology. As part of this stoic practice, we think about our core values and how our digital habits fit with them. When we make plans, we stop just passively consuming digital material and start actively using technology in a way that makes our lives better and helps us grow as people. 
This could mean making choices like using social media to share important moments with loved ones instead of mindlessly looking through stories or picking to read digital content that motivates and teaches instead of content that makes you feel bad or is a distraction. When we set goals, we have to be aware of why we're using technology and make decisions that are in line with our real wants and values. We should ask ourselves, does this digital activity add to my well-being and personal growth, or does it take away from it? By reviewing and improving our goals on a regular basis, we can make sure that our digital habits stay in line with our patient desire of a good life. Setting goals for digital involvement and practicing stoic thought become important ways to build stoic resilience against digital overload. With these habits, we can enter the digital world with purpose and awareness, making sure that our contacts with technology help us live a good and satisfying life. We can reduce the noise and distractions in the digital world by making sure our digital habits are in line with our core values and by thinking about how we use technology. In the midst of the chaos, we can find peace and focus. Eighth lesson. How to be more moderate online like a Stoic. Moderation stands out as a key concept for living a healthy life, especially when it comes to how we use technology. Don't think that the quiet way to digital moderation means giving up all technology. Instead, it means finding a balance that fits with our values and life goals. We can enjoy the benefits of being connected and having access to knowledge while still protecting our time, attention and health. Setting boundaries on our technology use, like tech-free hours or days, and being aware of the quality rather than the amount of our digital contacts is part of digital control. We respect the stoic ideal of self-control and making smart choices by using technology in ways that are important purposeful and true to who we are by practicing digital balance. Using Stoic practices to be more disciplined with technology. To follow the Stoic path to digital balance, we can use a number of practices that help us be more disciplined and aware when we use technology. Stoic practice of occasional abstinence is one that works well. In this practice, we choose not to use certain digital devices or sites for a set amount of time. Not only does this activity test our self-control, but it also helps us enjoy our non-digital activities more, which is a nice change from being constantly connected online. Also, we can think about our digital habits every day or every week, seeing how they fit with our goals and finding ways to make them better. As a way to find joy and satisfaction in the real world, it's also helpful to develop hobbies and interests that don't involve computers. By following these stoic practices, we learn to be disciplined with technology. This makes sure that our digital lives are in line with our moral beliefs and improves our general health. We can face the problems of the digital age with knowledge and calmness if we take the quiet way to digital balance. Using stoic methods for digital discipline gives us the power to use technology in ways that make our lives better without getting in the way of our goal of virtue, awareness and personal growth. We find a mix that lets us enjoy the benefits of the digital world while staying rooted in the real world and fully embracing the full range of our physical, mental and intellectual experiences. Lesson 9 Getting back on track in a world full of distractions. Digital distractions are everywhere these days, trying to get our attention from the moment we wake up until we go to sleep. It's become very hard to get our focus back. Stoic philosophy, which stresses virtue, self-control and reason, can teach us a lot about how to control our attention and focus it on what really counts. This lesson looks at how we can use stoic ideas to develop a deep and lasting focus that will help us handle the age of distractions with grace and purpose. 
Understanding the worth of attention, realizing the worth of our attention, is the first thing we need to do to change our focus. Stoicism's idea of prosoche, or focused attention, shows how important it is to be fully present and involved in what we are doing or experiencing at the moment. Being aware isn't just a way to get things done, it's also a way to show respect for ourselves, other people, and the things that deserve our attention. When we think of our attention as a limited and valuable resource, we are more careful about how we spend it, choosing to do things that are in line with our values and help us grow. It takes patience and practice, two traits that are at the heart of Stoic philosophy, to strengthen the will to focus in the face of endless distractions. Marcus Aurelius writes in his meditations that people should live their lives with meaning and purpose without wasting time on things that don't matter. To develop this kind of focused focus, we can give our attention to clear, measurable goals every day, like working uninterrupted for a certain amount of time, having deep talks with family and friends, or following our own hobbies and interests. Using methods like the Pomodoro Technique, digital simplicity, or planned breaks from technology can help us better organize our time and concentrate. Mindfulness meditation can also help us bring our attention back to the present moment when it wanders, which makes it easier to concentrate. Our surroundings have a big effect on how well we can concentrate. To make a place that helps people focus, we can use the stoic ideas of self-control and simplicity. To do this, we might need to clear out our physical and digital areas, turn off messages that aren't necessary, and set up habits that tell our thoughts, it's time to concentrate. The Stoics teach us that what's going on in the outside world doesn't have to affect how we feel inside. By consciously changing our surroundings to reduce distractions, we give ourselves the power to stay focused no matter what is going on around us. In this age of distractions, getting your focus back is not only a practical necessity, but also a serious task that fits with living a good life with a purpose. We can fight the urge to be distracted by technology by knowing how valuable our time is, making it easier to concentrate and setting up places that help us do so. This stoic way of thinking helps us live more consciously, focusing on the wealth of each moment and the tasks at hand. This way of thinking helps us live a life that is productive, satisfying, and peaceful. Lesson 10. How to be happy in a world full of comparisons. Today's digital world is full of carefully chosen pictures of success and beauty on social media sites, so it's easy to get caught up in the mistake of always comparing yourself to others. Comparing our lives to those of others over and over again can make us feel inadequate, envious, and unhappy. Stoicism, which focuses on inner virtue and personal greatness, is a strong way to deal with the stress that digital comparison causes. This lesson goes into detail about how Stoic ideas can help us be happy with our lives by teaching us to value our own path without giving in to the pulls of comparison. Embracing Stoic self-sufficiency, the core of Stoic philosophy, is the idea of self-sufficiency, or autakeia, which supports finding satisfaction and happiness within oneself, rather than depending on outside events or other people's acceptance. This concept tells us to focus on our own growth and ideals, knowing that the only way to be truly happy is to live by our values and keep trying to get better. We learn to value our own strengths and traits without having to compare them to those of others when we practice stoic self-sufficiency. We can now see social media and other digital platforms not as places to compare ourselves to others, but as places to get ideas and connect with others, knowing that everyone's path is different and has its own worth. Practicing thanks and acceptance is another stoic habit that can help you be happy. We can avoid the envy and unhappiness that come from digital comparison by focusing on what we do have instead of what we don't have. 
Stoics say that we should think about what we are grateful for every day, such as our skills, our relationships, and even the problems that help us grow. By practicing gratitude, we change our attention from what other people think of us to how wonderful our own lives are. This makes us deeply appreciate the present moment. Stoicism also teaches us to accept what is, where we are, what we can't change, and the fact that some things are out of our hands. This acceptance doesn't mean giving up. It means realizing that our work and mood are what give us real power. We can stop being unhappy because of comparison when we accept the things we can't change and focus on the things we can. To be happy in a world full of comparison, you have to be aware, think, and stick to stoic ideals all the time. We can live in the digital age with peace and happiness if we learn to be self-sufficient, show thanks, and accept our own paths. This calm attitude not only makes us feel better, but it also lets us use digital media in a healthy and positive way, getting ideas from other people's wins without being put down by them. By doing this, we support the stoic ideal of living a life of virtue, happiness, and resilience, even in the face of contemporary obstacles. Stoic advice has been around for a long time and can help us as we navigate the digital world's endless waves of alerts, comparisons, and distractions. The Stoic lessons give us a way to stay focused and at peace in a world that often seems meant to do the opposite. Remember that the quiet and power we build inside is what makes our lives unique, not the noise around us. Mindfulness, balance and self-reflection teach us how to not only get our attention back, but also find a greater sense of happiness and satisfaction. Moving forward, let's take on the task of living on purpose in a time when it's easy to get sidetracked. Let's make a promise to stick to habits that keep us grounded, beliefs that lead us, and traits that make us who we are. And when the digital world gets too much, let's remember Marcus Aurelius's advice to focus on doing the thing in front of us with sincere seriousness and tender desire, ignoring everything else. Let's work together to make a life where focus, happiness, and meaning are not just ideas, but things we live by every day. Not paying attention to the noise isn't just a way to avoid the digital chaos. It's also a way to live a worthwhile life, online and off. In this search, may we discover that the most valuable things are not our feeds or fans, but the quiet, connected and peaceful times we create amidst the noise. I am now going to talk about how to embrace Stoicism in the current world. We will look into the deep Stoic principles that will help us grow and give us the tools to become more dominating, sure of ourselves, strong and successful in everything we do. Stoicism, which has its roots in the old cradles of knowledge, was the life philosophy of leaders and fighters. It's still a base for people who want to make their own way in a tough world. Philosophical ideas aren't just talked about in this series, they're also used to build a strong presence, unshakable confidence, and a winning attitude. What does Stoicism give us that helps us deal with the constantly changing world we live in? What does it do to make us stars in our personal and work lives? Each lesson we're going to talk about today has answers. Turning old Stoic knowledge into modern success strategies we can use in our everyday lives. We will learn more about the Stoic art of managing how others see you, which means using problems as opportunities to get better. We'll talk about how logic can help us make the best decisions possible and how accepting the changes in life can help us develop a strong sense of self. We are going to learn how the Stoic emphasis on inner strength and virtue can help us reach new levels of skill and power. The power of how we see things. Today, the power of perception, our first lesson, gets to the heart of Stoic knowledge. A wise ruler named Marcus Aurelius once said, you have power over your mind, not outside events. 
These words have been remembered for hundreds of years. Recognize this, and you will find strength. But what does this mean for us today? Because of how fast-paced life is these days, our days are often full of lots of different things to do, people to talk to, and choices to make. The way we think about these things has a much bigger effect on our experience than the things themselves. Stoicism tells us that how we see the world depends on how we see it. These lenses can change the way we see things or make them clearer. Take this into account. Everything that happens to us is neutral. The colors of joy, sadness, anger or peace are added by our perception. Do we see a problem as an impossible task or a chance to improve ourselves when we face it? We can make a decision. We can control our mental reactions by changing how we see things, which leads to inner peace and resilience. Let's use this in real life. Imagine that you are late for a very important meeting because of traffic. It's up to you whether you let your anger ruin your day and mood, or you see it as a chance to take a few extra minutes to yourself, maybe to listen to a podcast, or just relax and clear your mind. Changing how you see things from being annoying to appreciative is at the heart of Stoic practice. Take a usual example. You get an unexpected email at work about a project slowdown or some negative feedback. This can be seen as a failure or criticism which can make you feel angry or self-doubt. The Stoic way is to see it as a chance to grow, to get better and learn new things. The event is the same, but people have very different ideas about it. The way people who have adopted Stoicism deal with problems, stress and relationships with others has changed. For everyone from business leaders to artists, the power of image is key to their success and happiness. How can we develop this stoic way of thinking in our everyday lives? Being aware is the first step. Take a moment every day to think about how you reacted. Do they come from habit, feeling, or a real understanding of what's going on? When you're having a hard time, stop and ask yourself, is there another way to look at this? This stoic way of seeing things can change the way you interact with other people. When you disagree with someone, try to see things from their point of view instead of getting angry or frustrated. This change could lead to more understanding, kindness and peaceful encounters. Remember that what shapes our experience of life is not what happens to us, but how we think about and react to it. We'll keep looking at how these stoic ideas can be applied to our everyday lives as we go through these lessons. Let's take the stoic power of seeing things by ourselves. It should be a light that helps us act wisely and understandably instead of rashly. Adopting this idea can make a huge difference in our lives. It can change problems into chances and disagreements into times when people can connect. Keep in mind that your trip through stoicism is not just about learning, it's also about changing why being rational is important. As we continue to learn about how the deep lessons of Stoicism can help us grow and succeed in the modern world, we now turn our attention to one of the philosophy's most important ideas, the essential role of reason. As a wise man in his own right and a leader of Stoic thinking, Marcus Aurelius pushed for reason to be the most important thing in life. He thought that reason could help us tell the difference between good and evil and between important and not important things. In today's busy world, how does this old advice still apply? Let's learn more about this idea and see how it can help us in our daily lives. Stoics believe that being rational means figuring out what we can control and what we can't. It helps us tell the difference between good, bad and neutral things. Our world is very complicated and we often have to make decisions and deal with events that are too hard to handle. Stoicism tells us that logic is the key to making smart choices. Not only is it about being smart or logical, but also about being able to see things clearly without letting bias or strong emotions cloud your judgment. 
by using our minds, we can handle these difficult and confusing conditions calmly and clearly. From the busy streets of old Rome to the fast-paced world of today, people have always needed to be able to think things through. Figuring out what's important, working on what we can control, and letting go of what we can't are all parts of this. How can we live this out in our daily lives? Imagine that you have to make a tough choice at work or in your personal life. Stoicism tells us to stop and think about our feelings before acting on them. You should ask yourself, am I able to control this? Is my reaction based on logic or on a feeling that caught me off guard? Can I change what happens by what I do? It's where you should put your energy and effort if the answer is yes. If the answer is no, it's a chance to work on accepting things as they are and pay attention to how you react. Beyond making choices, it's also about finding peace within. Because it's logical, we don't have to worry about things we can't change. It helps us put our energy toward things we can change, which makes our lives more productive, satisfying and calm. Developing logic can help us deal with the unknowns of life with a calmer heart and a better mind. We can set priorities, feel less stressed, and act in ways that are true to our core ideals. In the Stoic sense, being rational is not cold or distant. It's the calm and considered way to deal with life's many problems. At its core, reason is what helps us find our way through the fog of everyday life. Once we get good at it, it gives us the power to live our lives with meaning and purpose. This logic concept helps people make fair choices, control their feelings, and lead with honesty. As we go forward, keep Marcus Aurelius's advice in mind. Only think about what you can control. Let's make reason more than just an idea as we learn more about Stoicism. Let's make it a daily habit. Think about what you've done, understand how you feel, and pick the road of reason. In the next lesson, we'll look at how to deal with life's problems from a Stoic point of view. Don't forget that your trip through Stoicism is a chance to learn and grow. Accepting the challenges of life. We'll learn a strong Stoic lesson in this lesson that will help us grow and succeed in the modern world. In life, you have to face problems with courage and smarts. One of the most famous Stoic thinkers, Marcus Aurelius, taught us to see problems not as problems, but as chances to learn and grow. We will learn about how taking on tasks can have a big impact on our lives and how they change our experiences in this lesson. We all have to deal with a lot of problems every day. Our patience, resilience and resolve are put to the test by various scenarios. They can be anything from small annoyances to big changes in your life. However, Stoicism has a strong point of view. As Aurelius said, the obstacle to action leads to action. What is in the way becomes the way. Let's break down this idea and see how it applies to our lives today. It might be a tough job at work, a loss in your personal life, or even a problem that affects everyone around the world. As a Stoic, you shouldn't avoid these problems. Instead, you should accept them. Think about having a loss. Don't give up when things get frustrating or hopeless. Instead, ask yourself, what can this situation teach me? In what way can this make me stronger? Stoic resilience is based on this change in viewpoint. Finding worth in adversity, cultivating patience, and enhancing discipline are the key components. Stoics thought that problems were normal and important parts of life in the past. They thought that these things were not just to be born, but to be welcomed. They saw every challenge as an opportunity to develop qualities like courage, patience, and resilience. How can we make this a part of our daily lives? Start by changing the way you see things. Every struggle is a chance to grow and learn about the world and yourself. In tough situations, don't ask, why me? Request, what can I learn from this? 
Be aware that problems are a normal part of life and growth. When you're encountering a problem, pause, breathe, and center yourself. Think about the problem and the virtues you can use to deal with it, such as patience, imagination, or courage. Take the bad situation as a chance to get smarter and better. Do not forget that the task itself is not what makes you who you are or what you do on your journey. Also, it's helpful to divide problems into parts that are easier to handle. A big problem can be scary, but if you take it one step at a time, you can get past it. Enjoy the small wins along the way. They are important steps on your way to solving problems this year and in the future. Let's remember the stoic practice of accepting problems as we go through life's obstacles. Remember that every challenge is a chance to become stronger and more capable. By taking on life's obstacles, we can grow as people and become stronger inside. Take these lessons to heart as we go forward. They will help you live a good life. In the next lesson, we'll look at how the Stoics thought about death and how it can be used to drive us in our daily lives. Using death as a motivator. In our continued study of Stoicism in the modern world, we now come to a deep and often mistaken part of the philosophy, the use of death as a motivator. Marcus Aurelius was a ruler who was very calm and whose thoughts are still inspiring today. He often thought about death, not as a twisted interest, but as a strong drive to enjoy every moment of life. With his deep thoughts, Marcus Aurelius shows us that knowing we will die shouldn't make us afraid, but should make us want to live our lives fully and with meaning. Let's look at how this stoic view can change the way we live and make our daily lives better. The fact that everyone will die makes people feel uneasy, but from a stoic point of view, it's a lesson to enjoy every moment. Aurelius wrote, your life could end right now. Let that guide what you do, say, and think. This isn't about dwelling on how death is inevitable. It's about valuing life. It's a call to be true to ourselves, enjoy every moment, and make our deeds matter. We are given a huge number of chances every day to choose, create, meet, and learn. Still, these times often pass us by. Stoic thoughts on death serve as a warning that life is short and urge us to make the most of each moment with all our might. People who have adopted this Stoic advice tell us that being aware of how short life is has inspired them to follow their interests, fix broken relationships, and live with more purpose. Now think about this. If you knew that time was limited, how would you spend your days? Would you let small disagreements consume you, or would you try to build relationships that go deeper? The Stoics say that we should live each day as if it were our last, but not out of fear, but because we are happy to be alive. How can this knowledge be used in our everyday lives? Start every day with some time to think. Remember that each day is a gift and a chance to live your life to the fullest. Consider how you can make today great. For example, it could be following a long-held interest, spending valuable time with loved ones, or just stopping to enjoy the beauty around you. Be aware of your own death and the fleeting nature of life to guide your actions. Keep your attention on what's important and let go of small problems and complaints. Think about the things you do every day. Do they match up with your core goals and values? Make decisions that are true to your real self, not out of fear, but from a place of understanding and joy, because we only have a limited amount of time. Accepting that we will die gives us a greater appreciation for life's brief beauty and the drive to live in an honest and meaningful way. Let us take Aurelius's wise words with us as we continue our stoic journey. Let us use our death not as a shadow over our lives, but as a light that guides us to living fully. We will learn more about how self-reflection can change your life in the next lesson. How to reflect on yourself. As we try to understand how the deep ideas of Stoicism apply to today, 
We will now talk about an important part of Stoic practice, the art of self-reflection. As a true example of Stoicism, Marcus Aurelius pushed the practice of reflection as a way to understand and grow as a person. Marcus Aurelius did not just think about himself sometimes, he did it every day. Let's look at how self-reflection can help us understand ourselves better and decide what to do. In the Stoic sense, self-reflection means making a daily effort to look inside and figure out what drives us. It means looking at your thoughts and actions with openness and purpose. Doing this helps us live in line with our real ideals, learn from our mistakes and become smarter every day. Self-reflection is an ongoing process, not just a thought here and there. In order to better understand Stoic philosophy, Aurelius self-consciously wrote down his ideas in detail. The meditations of Marcus Aurelius are a great example of how to think about yourself. He didn't write for other people to read. Instead, he used writing as a way to talk to himself and think about his actions, fix his mistakes, and remember Stoic ideals. In our busy lives, how can we practice self-reflection? Setting aside time every day, even if it's only a few minutes, to think quietly is the first step. You can think about things while writing in a notebook, relaxing, going for a quiet walk, in a quiet moment before bed, or just by sitting still with your ideas. Did my actions today reflect my values? Are some things you can ask yourself. How did I handle problems? Which of these things can I do better tomorrow? Which of my tasks did I do well today? Or, where can I do better? Thinking about how you felt about what happened that day. To what extent did they match the stoic qualities of knowledge, courage, and moderation? Do not forget that reflecting on yourself does not mean being too critical or feeling bad about things you did. Looking at our actions and thoughts with an open mind and a desire to improve is what it means. It means admitting our flaws and praising our growth. If you want to make reflecting on yourself a habit, you should find a way that works for you. One way could be to write in a diary, talk out loud, or think while walking. Staying consistent is key. Take some time to think about how your actions and responses fit with the stoic way of life. Self-criticism should not be cruel, rather, it should be honest and helpful. In the modern world, let us continue to follow Stoicism by making self-reflection an important part of our daily lives. It helps us learn more about ourselves and our place in the world, and it helps us handle the challenges of life with knowledge. All reason and brotherhood we're back to talking about Stoicism in the current world. This part goes into detail about a very important Stoic idea, universal reason and brotherhood. As both a philosopher and a ruler, Marcus Aurelius saw the world as a web of logical people who are all linked to each other. Today, we're going to talk about how this Stoic concept can help people feel more connected to each other and more understanding in today's world. Aurelius thought that everyone is a part of a bigger picture, a group of people who are connected by reason and nature. We live in a time when the world is more connected than ever before, which gives this idea a new level of importance. We are encouraged to see past our differences and see the common sense and humanity we all have. Marcus Aurelius thought that everyone should act in a way that helps everyone else, by being fair and caring to others. This Stoic idea is still very important today because it tells us to build bridges of understanding and teamwork in societies that are becoming more and more varied. We have more ways to meet than ever, but a lot of the time we feel alone. How can the Stoic idea of universal brotherhood be used in our everyday lives? To start, Show care and understanding when you're with other people. Think about everyone you meet as a thread in the big fabric of life, just like you are. Try to see things from their point of view. Show them kindness and provide assistance when you can. Talk to people with an open heart and mind. 
Remember that justice and kindness are not just personal traits. They are also duties that everyone must share. In the things we do every day, let's try to be fair, be kind, and treat others with the respect and honor they deserve. Imagine going through each day with the belief that everyone you meet is related to you. Tolerating others isn't the same thing as wanting to learn and help them. All acts of kindness, like helping a co-worker, giving back to the community, or learning about global problems, strengthen this stoic concept. Remind yourself of this universal human link when you are experiencing strife or confusion. Try to be fair and kind, and remember that everything you do affects the bigger picture. We live in a world where disagreement is common. Let's work to bring people together and help them understand each other. Adopting the stoic idea of general reason and unity makes the world a better place for everyone. Let us keep this sense of how everything is connected with us as we learn more about these stoic lessons. Acceptance of fate. As we learn more about how Stoicism applies to modern life, we come to one of the most important Stoic teachings, acceptance of fate. In his reflections, Marcus Aurelius stressed how important it was to accept that our life's path was planned by the universe. In this section, we look at how accepting your fate can help you find inner tranquility and resilience. Accepting fate wasn't a mindless act for Marcus Aurelius. It was a deep understanding of how the world works. Let's talk about how this acceptance can help you live a happy and peaceful life. In Stoic philosophy, fate is a call to live in peace, not a force to be resigned. This is about realizing that some things are out of our hands and that we should still be happy about them. Accept the things that fate ties you to and love the people that fate brings you together, but do so with all your heart as Aurelius advised. Stoics thought that reason controlled the world and that everything happens for a reason that is natural. So, accepting fate entails believing in this natural order and being open to whatever life brings us, whether it be joy or sadness, success or failure. People who have used this Stoic advice to deal with the ups and downs of life show us how accepting fate has given them peace, resilience and often surprising chances. Imagine your life taking a turn you didn't expect. It might be a new job, a move to a different place, or a task you didn't expect. Stoicism teaches us to accept changes as part of our own unique journey instead of fighting them. Acceptance doesn't mean being passive. It means being involved with life and believing that everything happens for a reason. How then do we live our daily lives with this kind of acceptance? Start by realizing that you can't control everything. Instead of fighting things you can't change, ask yourself, how can I adapt to this? What can I learn from it? Accept these times as part of your unique journey. To find the right mix, you should both accept and act. We accept the things we can't change and work to change the things we can. Living a stoic life which is aggressive but accepting of fate's necessary turns, requires striking this balance. For a Stoic, accepting fate means being at peace with life's path, no matter what way it goes. Embrace every moment with a ready spirit and an open heart. It can set us free from the stress of trying to control things we can't, and it can lead us to a life of ease and happiness. The transience of all things. Let's think about a moving Stoic truth. Everything changes. Marcus Aurelius pushed this Stoic teaching, which tells us that life, success, and even our problems are temporary. Marcus Aurelius thought a lot about how short life is and told us to live our lives with this in mind. This section talks about how realizing that everything around us is temporary can help us live a more important and focused life. Life itself is temporary, as is everything else. Things like success, fame, wealth, and even our problems only last for a short time. What Aurelius says is very true. All is ephemeral, both memory and the object of memory. 
Becoming more aware of this can help us enjoy the present more and live a more thoughtful life. This not only makes us more humble, but it also helps us focus on what really matters, living a life of virtue and meaning. We learn how being aware of how short life is has helped people find more meaning and joy in their daily lives and how it has given them strength during times of loss or change when they talk about this stoic knowledge. So, how can we use this new knowledge of change in our everyday lives? Take a moment to enjoy the present. Engage in a full talk with a loved one, a calm walk, or the easy act of having a meal. Understanding that things change over time will help you value these events more. Additionally, use this point of view to concentrate on what really issues. In the big picture, how important is this issue? Asking yourself this question can help you stay focused on the important things and lead you to actions and decisions that are in line with your core beliefs. Put yourself in the position of letting go of the pursuit of things or transient joys. Focus on making permanent changes through your relationships, deeds and services to society instead. Living a simple life isn't what this stoic principle means. It means figuring out what gives your life real meaning and satisfaction. To put this stoic lesson into practice, first think about what you value most. Are these things or events temporary, or do they help you grow and be happy in the long run? Be thankful for the present moment. Reminding yourself every day that life is short will help you value your events and relationships more. Recognizing that everything changes over time helps us live more carefully and honestly, focusing on what makes our lives better in the moment. As we move forward on our stoic path, let us remember that life is temporary as a way to live more fully and virtuously. We will learn more about the inner citadel, a key part of stoic resilience, in the next lesson. As we learn more about stoicism in the modern world, we come across a deep idea that Marcus Aurelius taught us called the inner citadel. This symbolic castle stands for our inner strength and resilience. It's a safe place inside us that stays strong no matter what happens outside. We will talk about how to build and keep this inner fortress in this lesson. Finding peace and security inside is what the inner citadel is for us. In the middle of life's chaos, we go there to find insight, strength and peace. No matter what was going on around him, Aurelius thought that his inner haven, a place of reason and peace, would stay the same. There is reason and peace there, not affected by the ups and downs of outside events. Marcus Aurelius wrote a lot about this inner haven, which shows that even as ruler, he depended on his inner strength to stay calm and wise. Today's world moves quickly, so this idea is more important than ever. People who have taken care of their inner citadels, from business leaders to artists, tell us that this stoic practice has given them a solid core that has helped them get through both personal and professional changes. Learning new things and growing as a person also makes your inner citadel stronger. You can improve your resilience and knowledge by taking on new situations and obstacles. Don't forget that the strength of your inner fortress doesn't cut you off from the world. It gives you the power to connect with it more fully and honestly. Imagine that you are in a stressed situation, like a disagreement with a friend or family member, a setback at work, or pressure from outside sources. You don't act on impulse, instead, you go to your inner fortress. Here, where you are calm and aware of yourself, you have the clarity to react with knowledge and peace. Mindfulness and practice are needed to build your inner fortress. First, make it a habit to think about yourself and meditate. Review your reactions to outside happenings on a regular basis. Are they rash or well thought out? Practice stopping before you respond giving yourself a chance to find your inner base of calm. You can make your inner fortress stronger against life's ups and downs by practicing traits like patience, understanding and resilience. The inner citadel is a strong and deep stoic tool 
that gives us a place to be strong and calm. Let this idea help us stay calm and wise as we go through life, no matter what is going on around us. Morality as the only good. Morality as the only good. Let's talk about one of the most important Stoic ideas. Virtue is the only good. There were many Stoic thinkers, including Marcus Aurelius, who believed that virtue is the only real good and that it should be the goal of our lives. This lesson talks about how putting virtue at the center of our lives can make us truly happy and fulfilled. Stoicism says that virtue includes things like knowledge, fairness, courage, and moderation. These aren't just morals, they're also good ways to live your life. People believe that virtue is more important than money, success, or fame when it comes to living a good life. According to Marcus Aurelius, virtue brought its own rewards. In his meditations, he talks about how important it is to be wise, fair, brave, and self-disciplined in every part of life. We still need these virtues to help us find our way in a world that is often hard and complicated. People who want to live a good life, like teachers and business owners, tell us how the Stoic values have affected their relationships, decisions, and personal growth. Imagine starting each day with the goal of being good. This entails making choices that are moral and just, meeting difficulties with courage, and practicing self-control in the face of temptation. In spite of pressure from other people, it's about making sure your activities are in line with your best moral standards. So how do we live our everyday lives in a way that is based on these Stoic virtues? Start by thinking about the ideals of the Stoics every day. Look for chances to put these values into practice in your contacts and choices. Ask yourself, how can I show wisdom, justice, courage, and temperance today? If you have to make a choice, you should think about both the practical and moral effects. Keep in mind that virtue is not about being perfect, but about trying to be the best person you can be in every situation. Being aware of how we connect with others is another part of living a life of virtue. Being honest with each other, treating others fairly, and being brave when standing up for what's right are all parts of it. It has to do with finding balance and moderation in what we want and how we act. According to the Stoics, this is the way to real and lasting happiness. Let's use the teachings of Marcus Aurelius and other Stoic thinkers to build a life of virtue and meaning as we wrap up this series of lessons on how to better ourselves today, tomorrow, this week, this month, this year, next year, and throughout our lives. Thanks for coming along on this interesting trip through Stoicism in the modern world. In our fast-paced and often chaotic world, Stoicism stands out as a source of calm and clarity. The lessons are not just ideas, they can be used to build resilience, find peace in the middle of chaos, and live purposeful, honest lives. We've looked at many different parts of Stoic philosophy, from how powerful awareness is to how virtue is the only good. Nevertheless, the trip does not end here. Stoicism provides constant direction for our daily lives with its timeless knowledge. We started by learning how our thoughts affect our reality. We discovered that we have power over our minds, not the outside world. We talked about why it's important to be logical, how to deal with life's obstacles, and what drives people to live. It taught us the importance of self-reflection, how everything is linked, and how to accept fate. We learned about how life is temporary and how strong we are inside our inner citadel along the way. Finally, we understood that virtue is the best way to find happiness. These lessons, even though they are very old, are still very important in today's world because they teach us how to handle life's challenges with kindness and knowledge. I implore you to take these lessons with you, think about them, and apply them to your daily life as we conclude this set of lessons. They should give you strength when you don't know what to do, help you when you're not sure what to do, and tell you of how beautiful and full life is. 
Remember that Stoicism is more than just a philosophy. It's a way of life that you should follow. We should always be learning new things and trying to be the best versions of ourselves. The path of Stoicism is an ongoing one, one of learning, self-discovery and personal growth. Living with Stoicism in the modern world. As a final thought, let us consider how the timeless knowledge of Stoicism can help us in the years to come. Stoicism isn't just a philosophy. It's a way of life that gives us lasting lessons and rules that apply in a world that is always changing. Lessons learned should guide our actions going forward. Let's face the world with the knowledge that how we respond to things changes our experience more than the things themselves. Accept reason as a light that guides us through the complicated world we live in now. Imagine a world where problems are met with resilience and where knowing we will die makes us live each day with purpose and thanks. Imagine a society where understanding and empathy are very important and where traits like knowledge, justice, courage and moderation are not just ideas but real things that people do. As you go through tomorrow, next month, next year and all the years that follow, remember that the ideas of Stoicism are not just found in old books. They are alive in the choices and actions we make. Your refuge will remain the inner citadel you've built and your goal will remain to pursue virtue. To keep learning, growing and thinking, I urge you to keep going deep into Stoicism. Tell other people about these lessons. By doing so, we not only improve our own understanding, but we also spread the light of knowledge. Let's create a world where Stoic ideals guide our choices, improve our neighborhoods, and promote virtue, resilience, and understanding. We appreciate you joining us on this trip through Stoicism in the current world. The way to knowledge never ends, and we all learn new things all the time. The best way to avenge yourself is not to become like the wrongdoer, as Marcus Aurelius said. Imagine being at the point where action and desire meet, where every action is a rumbling roar and every wish is just an echo. This is where the old knowledge of Stoicism meets the call to action of today. If you go there, stop wishing, start doing, is more than just a saying. It's your way of life. On this path, doing is more important than hoping. Deeds speak louder than wants, and your life will show how powerful Stoic knowledge is over time. Lesson 1. In Stoicism, the power of reasoned action. Waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be. Be one, said Marcus Aurelius, a great Stoic philosopher. This powerful statement sums up the heart of Stoicism and what we're talking about today. Moving from wishful thinking to active doing. Stoicism, an age-old philosophy, has timeless advice on how to live a life of meaning, virtue and contentment. We will learn about and use Stoic principles and along the way we will get to the heart of Stoicism, the power of logical action. Stoics, who were led by minds like Marcus Aurelius, Seneca and Epictetus, thought that reason was more important than feeling. They said that we have complete control over how we react to things that happen inside our minds, but not over what happens outside our minds. This idea is at the heart of everything a Stoic does. Emotions shouldn't be pushed down. Instead, they should be understood and used in a smart way. Moving our attention from passively wanting things to be different to actively doing what we can change things becomes more important. Stoic advice for getting past inertia. Inertia, or the urge to do nothing or stay the same, is often the biggest thing that stops us from doing what we want to do. As Stoics tells us, problems shouldn't be seen as impossible to solve, but as chances to show virtue. The impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way as Marcus Aurelius said so beautifully. This way of thinking is essential for getting past inertia. We can find the strength to move from passive desire to determined action 
by seeing problems as stepping stones instead of problems. The importance of making smart choices. Making smart choices is at the heart of stoic behavior. To do this, we need to step back from our strong feelings and wants and think about our options with clarity and reason. Stoicism doesn't call for a life without feelings. Instead, it encourages feelings that are based on reason. When we make sense of our wants and needs, our activities have more meaning and are more likely to work. Hoping is often an emotional response to our situations. This process turns hoping into doing, which is a logical and planned reaction to the same situation. Stoic actions that can be used in everyday life. Before we can use stoic actions in our daily lives, we need to figure out what we can control and what we can't. To act effectively, you need to be able to understand. We put our attention on our own actions, thoughts and views instead of things happening in the outside world that we can't change. We can develop this attitude by engaging in daily activities like writing, meditation and thought which will help us deal with life's difficulties with calm and resilience. Following the stoic way of doing things. We find that our lives have more value and are less frustrating as we follow stoic habits. Stoicism gives us the power to replace wishful thought with steps that we can take based on our knowledge and virtue. This shows us that getting what we want is not the way to happiness. Instead, we should focus on what we can do. Being able to see things differently changes everything. It makes our lives more productive and in tune with ourselves and the world around us. Moving from wanting to doing is a strong lesson from Stoicism that can move you to act. It asks us to live not in the world of unmet wants, but in the world of sensible, well thought out action. We can get through the complicated parts of life with more focus, purpose, and happiness if we follow Stoic ideals in our daily lives. This is why we should follow the Stoic's example and make every moment a chance to act with knowledge, courage, and honesty. Lesson 2. Embracing the Strength of the Stoics As we keep looking into Stoicism and how it can be used in real life, we come across a deep and powerful part of this old philosophy the art of turning problems into chances. Marcus Aurelius and other Stoic philosophers taught us that our hardest times are often the ones that make us who we are. This lesson is based on their timeless wisdom. It's about changing how we think about problems so that we don't see them as obstacles, but as opportunities for growth and change. When Stoics think about problems, Stoicism tells us that how we see things shapes how we experience them, not the other way around. Marcus Aurelius famously said, Our life is what our thoughts make it. When we face problems, we can either give up and give in to depression, or we can change how we see things and find the hidden opportunities. The main idea behind Stoic resilience is that you should be able to deal with problems in a calm and sensible way, looking past the discomfort to see the chance it brings. Getting over your feelings. Handling our first feelings when we face problems is one of the hardest parts of facing them. A lot of people feel frustrated, angry or scared sometimes, but Stoicism teaches us not to let these feelings control us. Instead, we should recognize them, figure out where they came from, and then use reason to lead them. We don't lose our inner life when we take this method. Instead, it helps us see clearly enough to act carefully and successfully, changing problems into stepping stones. How powerful it is to reframe problems. One important stoic way to deal with problems is to reframe them, which means changing our minds so that we see problems as chances to learn, grow and become better people. This reframe isn't meant to ignore the suffering. It's just meant to change the way we talk about it. For instance, a failure at work can be seen as a chance to rethink our job path, learn new skills or find interests we haven't explored yet. By changing how we think about our experiences, 
we can see many more options that were hidden by a bad attitude. How to face obstacles in a real way. To use the stoic way of thinking in your daily life, start by figuring out how you behave when something difficult happens. Take a moment to think. Is there another way to look at this? Is this problem a chance to teach, lead, or bring about change? Write in a journal or practice thoughtful thinking to help you work through your feelings and thoughts. This will help you approach the situation with a more calm and logical mind. Remember that the goal is not to hide your feelings, but to control them with knowledge and understanding. Stoic Resilience – Living with it To live with Stoic Resilience, we must understand that the problems we face in life are not only unavoidable, but also necessary for our growth as people. It means realizing that every problem has the potential for an advantage just as big or bigger. This point of view not only helps us get through hard times, it gives us the power to grow in them. In the face of life's risks, this attitude makes us more flexible, creative and brave. Accepting tough resilience and seeing problems as chances is a process that changes things. It takes us to rethink how we see things, control our feelings with logic, and see the good in the bad things that happen to us. This lesson from Stoicism isn't just about how to deal with problems. It's also about how to use them to make your life more important and satisfying. As we learn more about and use the lessons of Stoicism, let us keep in mind that every problem has a chance waiting to be found. Third lesson want to achieve your destiny the calm way of doing things with a reason in the third lesson of our stoic trip we learn more about how to turn desire into fate through the practice of acting with a purpose stoicism tells us that just hoping won't get us anywhere action that is planned and followed through with focus is what makes the way to happiness we will learn how to use the stoic traits of control focus and resilience to make our goals come true in this lesson. How to understand Stoic Discipline Stoic Discipline is all about making sure that our actions are in line with our values and good sense. Not only should you do things, but you should do the right things at the right time for the right reasons. Self-awareness and self-control are at the heart of this practice. It helps us make choices that are in line with our inner goals instead of acting on instinct or short-lived wants. How attention and purpose play a part. Focus and purpose are two ideas that are very important to Stoic discipline. Stoics believe that our attention is a valuable resource that should not be wasted on pointless or confusing activities, but on things that have a real purpose. Focusing our thoughts and actions on what really matters gives us the power to make big changes in our personal and business lives, getting rid of distractions and putting things off. Building up resilience and persistence. Stoic discipline isn't just starting to do things, it's also sticking with them even when things go wrong. For the Stoics, problems were chances to get stronger and learn more about themselves. Building up our resilience and determination helps us stay the course even when things get tough. This determination is very important for making long-held goals come true. Useful tips for being patient in everyday life. To use stoic discipline in your daily life, start by making goals that are clear, attainable and in line with your values. Break these goals down into smaller jobs that you can handle and give each one your full attention and purpose. Regularly think about yourself to see how things are going and change your actions as needed. Accept problems as chances to improve and be thankful for the lessons they teach you. Doing things with purpose, focus and resilience is what Stoic discipline is all about. It's a journey from dreaming about what could happen to taking deliberate steps to make it happen. When we follow the stoic road of discipline and action, our dreams don't just turn into actions. They turn into a life we create for ourselves, one full of purpose, knowledge and happiness. Getting used to routines and order. 
Setting up a pattern and order in our daily lives is an important part of Stoic discipline. It was known to the Stoics that a well-organized life leads to an organized thought. By making a habit and sticking to it, we build a structure that helps us reach our goals and stay focused. This structure shouldn't be fixed, but should be able to bend with the times while still giving you a solid base for steady action. Why making choices with care is important. Each choice we make is a building block for our future. Stoicism teaches us to think about the choices we make and know that every choice, no matter how small, shapes our lives. Stoic control is most fully shown when we make decisions that are in line with our values and goals. Mindfulness in decision-making forces us to stop and think, making sure that our actions are not impulsive, but planned and well thought out. Putting the power of thought to use. Stoics have a lot of strong tools at their disposal. It lets us think about what we did, what we learned, and what changes we need to make. Regular self-reflection, like writing in a book, meditating, or just thinking about things, helps us stay on track with our goals and stay true to our values. This practice not only helps us grow as people, but it also makes us more determined to live our ideals. Through adversity, developing resilience. When faced with adversity, stoic restraint is often most evident. Stoics didn't give up when they faced problems. Instead of giving up in sadness or anger, they saw these times as chances to show their values. We develop a strong inner strength that helps us in everything we do in life by meeting problems with courage and resilience. You don't naturally have this kind of resilience. You have to work at it and stick to the Stoic ideals in order to develop it. Using the practice of Stoicism in work and relationships. Stoic discipline includes more than just improving ourselves. It also affects how we treat others and how we do our work. It teaches us to be present, gentle and understanding in our interactions and to treat others with kindness and care. It takes courage to approach work with honesty, hard work and a commitment to success in the workplace. When we use stern discipline in every part of our lives, we create a balance that makes both our personal and work lives better. Developing stoic discipline in your daily life is a journey that will change you. It entails developing a routine that is both organized and flexible, making conscious decisions, reflecting on a regular basis, developing resilience in the face of adversity, and putting these principles into practice in all facets of life. As we continue to live by these stoic ideals, we find that we are moving with more purpose and clarity, not just in our actions, but also toward a life of deep satisfaction and success. Lesson 4. How to live a good life. Stoicism and taking charge of your feelings. The fourth lesson in the Stoic journey is all about learning mental resilience, which is a central idea in the Stoic philosophy. Stoicism doesn't tell us to hide our feelings. Instead, it teaches us how to understand, deal with, and express our feelings in a way that is in line with virtue and reason. We will learn how to control our feelings in a serious way, turning them from possible problems into strong tools that will help us live a good life. According to Stoicism, Feelings are merely judgments and reactions to how we see the world. Examining these thoughts and making sure they are in line with truth and logic is the key to emotional control. Stoics say that our thoughts about things that happen in the world are what bother us, not the events themselves. In other words, we can stay calm even when our emotions are raging by changing our minds, knowing how to deal with and change bad feelings. It can be hardest to deal with negative feelings like anger, fear, and sadness. Stoicism teaches us to deal with our feelings in a way that helps us understand and change our thoughts. It takes courage to stop and think about where our bad feelings come from when we're feeling them. Are they based on reasonable opinions or wrong ideas? We can start to change these feelings in a way that is good for us and in line with our values 
if we know where they come from, the art of being mindfully silent. Being mindful is an important part of the stoic way of dealing with feelings. Being fully present and aware of our thoughts, feelings and behaviors as they happen, without judging or reacting right away, is what it means. By doing this, we can make room between the trigger and the reaction, in which we can choose to act in a way that follows stoic principles. Being mindful helps us deal with our feelings in a clear and smart way instead of letting them rule us. Building up good feelings. Although controlling bad emotions is a big part of stoicism, developing good feelings that help our own and other people's well-being is also very important. When you think and act in a good way, you can naturally feel good emotions like love, thanks and joy. We can boost our general happiness and sense of satisfaction by doing things like writing in a gratitude book or doing acts of kindness. Resilience in the face of stress. Regular self-reflection and mindfulness practice are important if you want to use strong emotional resilience in your daily life. You should think about how your emotional reactions to different scenarios fit with stoic ideals. Mindfulness helps you stay aware of your feelings and stoic techniques can help you figure out what's making you angry and how to stop it. Focus on good deeds and thoughts that make you feel happy and joy to cultivate positive feelings. Emotional resilience through stoicism means being aware of our feelings, lining them up with logic and using them to help you grow and be happy. The trip takes time, experience and understanding of oneself, but the benefits are huge. Being in control of our feelings not only makes us happier, but it also makes our relationships with other people better, which leads to a more peaceful and satisfying life. Taking a stoic view of life's problems is the fifth lesson. As we move into our fifth lesson on the Stoic path, we'll be talking about how important perspective is. Stoicism teaches that our perspective, how we choose to see and understand what's happening in our lives, has a huge impact on how we feel and what we do. This lesson looks at how taking a Stoic view can change how we deal with life's problems, turning things that might cause us stress into chances to learn and grow. Stoicism doesn't just see things from a passive point of view, it also sees perspective as an active way of thinking. It means seeing things not just the way they look, but also the way they really are, without any bias or emotional colouring. The Stoics thought that we could change how we react to any scenario by shifting our point of view. This would help us stay calm and effective, seeing problems as chances to learn and grow. One important part of the Stoic view is seeing problems as chances to learn and grow. There is no need to deny the pain or trouble that comes with life's trials. Instead, look for the lessons and skills they can teach you. When confronted with adversity, ask yourself, what can this teach me? How can this strengthen my character? By changing our focus in this way, we can find value and meaning in even the most difficult situations. What part do reason and truth play? From a stoic point of view, everything is based on logic and reason. It asks people to look at situations without letting strong feelings or personal preferences cloud their judgment. When we think about things logically, we can see things more clearly and act better. It means asking ourselves if our responses are based on facts or on fears and hopes that aren't based in reality. Detachment and acceptance are being practiced. Stoicism encourages a healthy kind of detachment, not retreating from life, but letting go of identifying too much with what happens in the outside world. Acceptance goes hand in hand with separation. We know that some things are out of our control and choose to accept them as they are. Using a stoic point of view in everyday life, we can free ourselves from needless stress by adopting distance and acceptance. This helps us stay focused on what we can change. To live your life with a calm attitude, start by paying attention to how you respond to things right away. 
Push yourself to look past your first thoughts and consider other points of view. Try seeing problems as chances to grow instead of as problems to solve. Develop your ability to think clearly and objectively, especially when your feelings are strong. Remember to tell the difference between things you can manage and things you can't. Acceptance is key for the second one. Taking a stoic view of life means looking at it through the eyes of virtue, reason and knowledge. It involves realizing how powerful our thoughts are and using them to handle the challenges of life with ease and resilience. As we live our lives with this point of view, we find that problems are less scary and that we can experience more joy, satisfaction and peace. Stoics believe that living in the present is the best way to live. We talk about the important practice of living in the present moment in our sixth lesson on the path to Stoicism. Stoicism teaches us how to be aware and how important it is to focus on the present through its deep focus on the here and now. In order to live a happier, more satisfying life, the Stoic philosophy urges us to accept the moment and let go of worries about the future. The past cannot be changed and the future is unknown, according to Stoic philosophy. So, the present time is the most important thing. Marcus Aurelius, a famous Stoic philosopher, says that we should live in the present because it's the only place where we can really use our qualities and change our lives. One important part of Stoic peace and happiness is focusing on the present, getting out of the traps of the past and the future. Sometimes we think too much about the future or the past, which can be very hard to deal with. Stoicism teaches us to learn from the past without getting caught up in it and to get ready for the future without getting overwhelmed by anxiety. To avoid these mistakes, we can stay in the moment, which lets us act with focus, purpose and calmness. Being aware and practicing mindfulness. Being fully aware of and involved in the present moment is called mindfulness. Being mindful is a useful way to live by Stoic ideals. This means focusing on our feelings, thoughts and experiences without judging them or getting distracted. Being mindful can help us understand ourselves and our surroundings better, which helps us make choices that are more well thought out. Taking pleasure in the simplicity of the present. Stoicism gives us the courage to find joy and satisfaction in the simple things that happen right now. This could mean enjoying the beauty of nature, the comfort of a nice talk, or the happiness of a job well done. Focusing on these small joys can help us feel thankful and satisfied, which will make our everyday lives better. Adding living in the present moment to daily life. Start incorporating this silent practice into your daily life by focusing on the things you are doing at the moment. Put your whole self into the experience, whether you're working, eating or relaxing. Focusing on the feel of your breath or the tasks at hand can be good ways to practice awareness during everyday activities. When your mind wanders to the past or the future, tell yourself often to come back to the present. Living in the present moment, which is a stoic practice, is a strong way to make your life more peaceful and full. It frees us from the weight of guilt and fears about the future, so we can fully enjoy life as it happens. Mindfulness and focusing on the present moment help us enjoy every moment for what it is worth. We can find depth and meaning in the simple present moment. 7. Lesson 7. Using Stoic Virtues to Find Inner Peace In this, the seventh lesson of our Stoic series, we'll talk about inner peace, which is one of the most coveted but hard to achieve goals. Stoicism, with its deep understanding of human nature and philosophy, has always been a way to find deep, lasting peace within ourselves. We will learn about how the Stoic values of knowledge, courage, justice and moderation can help us find peace and unity within ourselves in this lesson. How to understand Stoic inner peace. Stoicism says that inner peace is more than just not having any problems or arguments. 
It's a state where our thoughts, feelings and deeds are all in sync with each other. It comes from living in harmony with nature and reason, where our urges and wants are in line with good behavior and smart thinking. A strong link with the self and the world around us, as well as a sense of happiness and resilience, are characteristics of this peace. What Stoic wisdom does. The most important Stoic virtue is wisdom, which is a key part of finding inner peace. Being able to tell the difference between what we can control and what we can't, and focusing our energy on what we can control. Wisdom also means knowing how things work, including our own thoughts and feelings, and being able to handle life's challenges with clarity and intelligence. By working on our knowledge, we give ourselves the tools to handle the complicated things in life with a cool and level head. Strength and Courage Stoicism defines courage as the resilience to deal with life's difficulties with honesty and integrity, as well as bravery in the face of danger. Having the courage to face our fears, accept change and the unknown, and take responsibility for what we do are all parts of it. This kind of courage is necessary to keep your inner peace when life throws you curveballs and problems. Fairness and living in peace. Stoic justice means getting along with others and working for the good of everyone. When we deal with others, we should be fair, kind and respectful, and we should always be honest. Stoic fairness helps us build good relationships and a sense of belonging, both of which are important for mental peace. How to control yourself with temperance. The virtue of temperance, also known as self-control, aids in the control of our wants and needs. You should find the right amount of everything, not going overboard, but also not denying yourself life's pleasures and joys. Temperance helps us find balance, which is important for inner peace, because it lets us live in line with our real wants and ideals. Using the virtues of the Stoics in everyday life. To incorporate these Stoic ideals into your everyday life, Begin by engaging in self-reflection to learn about your values and how your actions match with them. Develop the habit of reflecting on your thoughts and behaviors and try to handle things with calmness and knowledge. When you're with other people, show understanding and kindness and try to keep your wants and deeds in balance. Remember that the path to inner peace is an ongoing one that needs constant effort and awareness. How Stoicism can help you find inner peace. Stumbling toward inner peace through Stoicism means making our inner selves and the outside world work well together. Following the Stoic values of temperance, courage, knowledge and calmness can help us handle life's problems calmly and stay happy and peaceful. Stoics believe that inner peace is not some far-off ideal, but a real and doable state of being that makes our lives and the lives of those around us better. Lesson 8. How to build relationships like a Stoic. In our eighth lesson on the path of Stoicism, we'll be talking about relationships, which are an important part of being human. Stoicism, which is frequently mistaken for a private philosophy, places a high value on society and social ties. This lesson looks at how Stoic ideas can help us make and keep important bonds with other people, which can make our own lives and the lives of those around us better. Stoicism and getting along with others. Stoicism says that people are social by nature and were made to live in peace with others. Our relationships have a huge effect on how happy and healthy we are. Stoic ideas like understanding, kindness and mutual respect are important for building partnerships that last. We can build stronger relationships and a stronger sense of community by following these rules. Having empathy and understanding. Stoics believe that the most important thing for building relationships is empathy, which means being able to understand and share other people's feelings. Putting yourself in someone else's shoes is a stoic way of life that pushes us to try to understand their thoughts and feelings. This practice helps us understand and connect with others more deeply 
which lets us treat them with respect and kindness. How Stoics Talk to Each Other To build and keep bonds, you need to be able to talk to each other clearly. Stoicism encourages people to talk to each other in a clear, honest and polite way. I advise us to listen carefully, speak carefully and be honest when we say what we think. By talking to each other in a calm way, we can avoid mistakes and fights and lay the groundwork for honest and open communication. Self-interest and altruism in balance. Stoicism helps us find a balance between doing what we want and making other people happy. The lesson is that genuine self-interest is in line with what's best for everyone. In relationships, this means trying to find solutions that are good for everyone and take into account and respect everyone's wants and well-being. Using stoic virtues to deal with conflict. Every relationship has problems, but stoicism can help you deal with them in a healthy way. If we approach arguments with stoic ideals like justice, patience and moderation, we can stay cool and make sense of them. This method not only helps to solve problems, but it also makes trust and respect stronger. How to use Stoicism in different kinds of relationships. The silent way of dealing with relationships works for all kinds of people, like family, friends, co-workers and strangers. When we act with Stoic ideals in every contact, we can build many satisfying and helpful relationships. Being present, genuinely interested in others, and making a good difference in their lives are all parts of this. Using Stoic ideas in your relationships can help you have deeper and more peaceful bonds. Stoicism teaches us to combine self-interest and kindness in our relationships and to approach them with care and effective communication. In this way, we not only improve our own health, but we also improve the health of those around us, which builds a sense of community and belonging. Nineth Lesson Stoicism and How to Let Go in our ninth lesson on Stoicism, we look at the art of letting go, which is an important and difficult part of the philosophy. Stoicism shows us how important it is to accept things as they are and let go of things we can't change. This lesson is about how following Stoic principles can help us let go of ties, expectations and old grudges, which can make our lives more peaceful and happy. The Stoic view on being in charge. What is within our power and what is not is clearly separated in Stoic philosophy. As we learn from this, we realize that even though we can control our actions, responses and decisions, we can't directly change many other parts of life. To be able to let go, you need to understand and accept this limitation. It helps us focus on our own actions and thoughts instead of what's going on around us how to let go of attachments. Stoicism says that people shouldn't get too attached to things like rank, financial things, or even certain relationships. Stoics caution against pinning our happiness on these external factors, though enjoying life's joys is not without courage. By learning detachment, we can enjoy the good things in life without letting them control us. This makes us more calm and strong how to deal with hopes and letdowns. Having high hopes can often leave us feeling let down, especially when those hopes are tied to things we can't change. Stoicism pushes us to accept things as they are, rather than expecting certain things to happen. This doesn't mean being idle or uninterested. It means being ready for different results and being able to accept them without getting upset when they happen. Forgiving and letting go of past hurts. Keep resentments from the past can be a big source of stress. Stoicism encourages people to accept and let go of their anger as a means of self-liberation, not as a sacrifice to others. Letting go of anger frees us from the bad feelings that hold us back to the past and lets us live in the present more fully. Exercises that you can use to practice stoic release. Doing regular self-reflection to find areas of connection or unaddressed complaints 
is a good way to practice letting go in everyday life. To strengthen your resilience and lessen fear and anxiety, use stoic exercises like negative imagery to mentally practice the loss of these ties. Mindfulness helps you stay in the present and let go of guilt and fears about the future. The stoic art of letting go is a potent practice that encourages happiness, resilience and inner peace. When we know what we can control and accept what we can't, we can handle the unknowns in life with grace and ease. The true core of stoic knowledge is letting go of ties, demands and complaints so that we can live with freedom and peace. Lesson 10. Using Stoic Principles to Reach Your Full Potential Stoicism is, at its core, a philosophy of action based on real knowledge and virtue, which brings us to our tenth and final lesson in this Stoic series. This lesson looks at how Stoicism gives us the strength to go beyond just wanting something and actually doing something about it. It helps us reach our full potential and turn our dreams into real things. What the Stoics say we should do. Stoicism teaches that the only way to find true happiness is to do something with a reason, a philosophy that says people should be involved in the world and do so in a way that is based on morality and reason. The Stoics think that everyone can do great things if they act in line with their values and work hard at it over and over again, taking wants and turning them into goals. One important part of Stoicism is turning your wants into real goals. We need to have a clear idea of what is important and what we can do to make this happen. When we set goals that are in line with our values and that we know we can actually reach, we move from wishful thought to actionable planning. How self-control and dedication play a part. Self-control and dedication are important for the Stoic on their way from wanting to do something to actually doing it. These traits help us stay focused, get past problems, and keep going even when things get hard. Stoicism says that discipline is not a way to punish yourself, but a way to get freedom, the freedom to act in line with your true nature and get what you want. How to get past procrastination and inertia. Moving from wanting to doing can be hard because of things like procrastination and inertia. Stoicism helps us deal with these problems by telling us to act right away, even if it's just a little something. Memento mori, which means remember that you will die, is a strong stoic concept that reminds us that life is short and that we need to live fully and act quickly. Actionable plans that you can use right away. To follow the conservative way of life, start by breaking your goals down into chores that you can handle. Put these jobs at the top of your list and approach them with full attention. Review your plans often and make changes as needed. Be flexible and open to change. Get used to being accountable for what you do and be proud of your ability to make real progress. How to become calm from stop wishing, start doing is to use the power of our goals. Wisdom, discipline and moral virtue guide it and it tells us to be responsible for our actions, face obstacles with courage and live by our inner values. By practicing stoicism, we give ourselves the strength to make our dreams come true, reach our full potential and make the world a better place. As we wrap up this guide, take a moment to reflect on the journey we've just shared. We've explored the ancient wisdom of Stoicism, not just as a philosophy, but as a practical toolkit for creating the life you've always wanted. It's been about more than just understanding concepts. It's been about applying them to make real changes in your life. Remember, the journey to living your best life is ongoing. The lessons and strategies we've discussed are tools that you can carry with you and use every day. Whether you're facing tough decisions, navigating life's ups and downs, or just trying to live more intentionally, Stoicism offers a foundation of strength, clarity and purpose. 
take these teachings and make them a part of your daily life. Let them guide you in making choices that align with your true self, in facing challenges with courage and resilience, and in finding joy and satisfaction in the present moment. The path to a life filled with purpose, contentment, and peace is a personal one, and you have the power to shape it every step of the way. Thank you for joining us on this transformative journey. May the insights you've gained inspire you to continue growing, exploring, and striving for a life that reflects your deepest values and aspirations. Here's to your journey of discovery, growth, and the creation of a life filled with genuine happiness and fulfillment. Keep living with purpose, embracing the wisdom of stoicism, and building the life you truly want to live.